9.58 here on QAM, wrapping it up. Can I get to this Marlins Bat Boy story? Please. So on a dare from Dodgers pitcher Brad Penny, what a mature guy he is. Do, 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 do. He, no, he wasn't involved. He dared the Marlins Bat Boy to drink a gallon of milk in under an hour and not throw up. <laughs> Penny offered the Bat Boy 500 bucks if he could do it. Penny, <laughs> Penny told the Miami Herald that the boy drank the milk and didn't throw up, but didn't finish the gallon in the allotted time. By the oh. way, once the milk is out for like at 40 minutes, I ain't drinking it anymore. And the kid gets a six-game suspension from the Marlins for doing this. I don't know why. And Brad Penny has a great quote. You get ten games for steroids and six games for milk. Mm. Where's the laughter? <laughs> well, thank you. I was expecting a little It wasn't real. He said the manufacturer. <laughs> I once challenged Clint Hurdle, but he was afraid the milk would... Curdle. Curdle. Yeah, that's bad. Well, don't get uh, rained on now. It's going to be really, really bad. Sunny Thanks. here ain't going to be 79 today, like paradise. Really? And, you know, the eye of the storm is due east of Boca right now. You know who lives in Boca? Do, 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 do. That's not good. But he's gotten out. The good thing for him, though, we got a ball game today at 1.30, the pregame, and again tomorrow. Yep, there's no... So uh, somebody lucks out. How do you like that? Won't have to... Get the oars out and uh, float all the way down from Boca. Do, 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 do. No midday program the next couple of days. No, I'll be damned. And you got a little uh, little time off today, only a half yeah, an hour. 30 pregame. Thank goodness they're playing in Milwaukee. Because oh! if they were playing in South Florida, I don't think you'd have no ball game. It's a good point, and you have to work the extra half hour. Which... I don't want to get you nervous, but I'd start. Uh, I'd get home real nice and early if I were you, because they keep talking about tonight and tomorrow, and they're yeah. full of crap because it's only 45 miles east of uh, landfall. Yeah, but it's going and really it's... slow. Eight miles an hour. Well, you do the math, mister. Yeah, eight times... About um, five and a half uh, hours, sounds like to me. Well, what is it now? Ten? So that's like 3.30. Yeah, I thought Three, it was about, uh, about 30 minutes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say yeah. right around yeah. there. <laughs> I was actually like going to say that, but you beat me well, to the punch. Well, even if it slows down a little bit more than that, it's like uh, late afternoon. Yeah, we got some miserable... It's going to be so nasty. And they, oh, you know, they closed goodness. everything more, already, too. One more reason not to be in South Florida. I don't want to you know, rub it in or anything like that, but boy, this is, and this is only uh, end of August. Well, we nothing yet. it's still worth it, though. A couple rainy days for all the nice oh, weather yeah. we have. Yeah, like when I got caught down there last year in the late September in the middle of those 18 hurricanes in a row, and I couldn't get the hell out of there. That, that, was, kind of a, that was kind of a weird stretch, though, right? That's not the norm, yeah, is it? weird stretch. It's a big stretch. Well, I'm looking forward to uh, not uh, now not working tomorrow morning. So well, that's right. You got a uh, tomorrow night part of the day off tomorrow, but tomorrow night you got uh, Carolina Ale House at seven o'clock. Everybody, swim out there to see uh, Geldy at the Carolina <laughs> Ale House at seven tomorrow. Yeah, get on your I'm you sure get on your raft. A, I'm sure you'll have a big turnout for that. Well, I mean, we hope that it, it it clears up by then and we can do the show because, as you know, Neil, there's a little there's a little fee attached to me going there. Yeah. So well, I hope that a, you'll get the fee as long as you can get there. That's all. I that's can get. That counts. Wait, so you're and saying if we can keep the transmitter. On the air. That's the uh, That's real the problem. Big one. So you're saying if I get there, even if we can't get on the air, I, sh- I should still get no. paid? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Just tell them, give me the check, and, uh, you know, I'll see you. So when I put in for you, can you initial it? Put your initials no next problem. to it? No so problem. I'll, I'll put a Greg Weed squiggle on the bottom Thank of you. your uh, request. No, I appreciate that. The squiggle's yeah. always good. All right. That'll, hey, how about, uh, I wanted to ask you, Luongo turns down five mil. Pretty, uh, pretty nice offer by the team, no? Yeah. I mean, how can he turn down five well, million right. a year? His agent's an idiot. His agent's a dumb frog. What's with that guy? I just told you. Five million he's got a year. He's pop and disease. Dumb frog. You know that's not that's not, then he's not a dumb guy. Yeah. Pop and sharp. You should lose so long. He's as sharp as a marble. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. I'm well, leaving. Why do you do that? Well, I know because I like Denny. Like you, no, you don't. You yes, gotta I see do. him all the time. Next, you'll be telling me you like Rimmer. I don't have to see Rimmer anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you do. They're coming down there. Yeah, what? Yeah, Rimmer's a night. Rimmer's a good. Just the, I had caller ID. Just, yeah, a just, stingy, just a little oh, stingy. Just a little stingy and a yenta. Yeah. Otherwise, a, a good guy. And yeah. a big mouth. Right. Other than that, he's, he's a stingy yenta. He's a stingy yenta. But yeah. he's not a bad. He, Rimmer's always been a nice Dave guy. Dave Strader, by the way, uh, is the Eric Reed of hockey. I just thought I mentioned that he's going to be your counterpart doing the TV games. Yes. Yeah, he's a very nice guy. Red Wing guy and uh, ESPN guy. And yep. he does a good job, except he talks through his teeth, which I just I can't stand like Eric Reed. Kind of like uh, our Josh Cordes used to do that. And every now and then lapses back into that. Talks through his teeth. Really? Yeah. I never I'm actually expected. caught that. Huh? I never actually caught that. I didn't realize that. Well, you better start listening a little more carefully. I'm trying to do that yeah. now. I, how did As not? a matter of fact, no, we've got a fantastic that. couple of new bits today. I do, 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 do. Right at the start, which I think you'll enjoy tremendously, knowing how much you hate. That's it. You something. see, well, what do I always tell you about hate? Despise. That's a very, very strong word. Revile. Oh, come on. Yeah. Go ahead. 
Oh, that's 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 <laughs> fine. I got no problem with that. <laughs> Come on, Kelly. One doy. Come on, just I one. will not do it. Just say it. Doy. doy. I will not do it. Doy. Doy. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Excellent. Have a nice day. I got to okay, swim you home. Re- you redeemed yourself. Okay. Have Adios. a nice safe swim. See okay. Trying to make okay. It. Don't don't play the open. Uh, kill it. For a very very long time. They're also reminding people that once the storm passes, be careful of standing water. It could be filled with and contaminated with bacteria, broken glass, even hidden power lines. There have been tragedies in the past. And maybe the boogeyman might be in there, too. There's Susan Candiotti. She's the only person at CNN we like. She's a sweetheart. Don't we like her a lot? We do. Got just to go to show you that nothing is perfect, on the other side of the screen, they got Mrs. Rush Limbaugh. Florida. Oh, brother. Look at that bitch. I used to actually like her a little bit. I thought she was okay. She never stole a freight train. I thought she was kind of like uh, malignant as yeah. opposed I mean, uh, benign. Now she's tainted. Now she, oh, tainted. Maybe not too much wind damage, but again, too early to say. All right. Yeah, see, now they're saying storm expected a short tonight or early tomorrow. Meanwhile, at uh, Sky Miles, uh, the other, the weather guy, whatever his name is, Chad, uh, Chad Miles. He's, uh, there he is. Dad, good morning, dear. When it gets that close, I just hope she's in a building, not Hi. holding on to a pole. So we, put, we should start a fund to get weight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's yuck it up, exactly okay? Down. I like, though, how you touched on... Ah, see, they're just... He was already saying that uh, you better watch out and you better not pop because it's not going to be tonight and early tomorrow. The uh, thing is 45 miles east of... Uh, the eye is like due east of, I would say, uh, Deerfield right now. But you know something? He's right. It is making kind of like a wobble, and it could go to the south. This is one of the strangest things I've ever seen. But at any rate, here's the deal. Katrina's slowly getting better organized as it moves westward towards southeastern Florida. Oh, and I never played the, uh, well, I'll play it in a minute. Okay. What? I never played the bits or anything because I want to, like, get into this. I don't. Because I want to pretend like we have some idea what's going on. A hurricane warning remains in effect for the uh, southeastern Florida coast from Vero Beach southward to Florida City, including Lake Okeechobee. Or is that Okeechobee? Okie dokie. A hurricane warning. Oh, there's Bob Schieffer with a hurricane report. A hurricane warning means, well, we know that. A tropical storm warning remains in effect for the northwest Bahamas, as if we care about them. Hubman Dreard. A tropical storm watch remains in effect for east-central Florida coast from north of Vero Beach northward to Titusville, including all of Merritt Island, and for the middle and upper Florida Keys from the west ast end of the Seven Mile Bridge northward to south of Florida City. A tropical storm watch is also in effect for the Florida west coast from Florida City to Englewood, including Florida Bay. A tropical, well, we know what it means. Why do they always have to say, here's what it means, like we're a bunch of idiots, okay, like we haven't been through this 80 million times? Hey, they know you are. Dave, you are certainly not out of this storm. You could be on the bad side of this. Oh, yeah, that's right. You could be. I'm dying over here. At 8 o'clock this morning, there will be another advisory in ele- at 11. The center of tropical storm Katrina was located near latitude 26.2 north, longitude 79.0 oh. west, about 30 miles. About 30, man. South southwest of Freeport Grand Bahama Island, about 70 miles east of Fort Lauderdale. But now it's like uh, two hours later, so it's like, see there, look at that. He's still showing all those possible radar models. They can't figure out where this thing is wobbling. Maximum sustained winds near 50 miles an hour with higher gusts. Additional strengthening is possible today and tonight, and Katrina could reach Category 1, a weak Category 1 hurricane strength before the center reaches the southeastern coast of Florida. Tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 70 miles from the center. An automated observing station at Settlement Point on Grand Bahama uh, reported sustained winds of 43 miles an hour with a gust of 50, and Freeport on Grand Bahama Island also reported sustained winds of 43. The estimated minimum central pressure was 999 millibars. Uh, storm surge flooding of four to six feet above normal tide levels along with large and dangerous battering waves can be expected near and to the north of where the center makes landfall in Florida. Storm surge flooding of three to five feet above normal uh, tide levels along with large and dangerous battering waves can be expected near the center in areas of onshore winds in the Bahamas. Mon. Due with slow forward speed, Katrina uh, is expected to produce significant heavy rainfall event over the northwest Bahamas in South Florida with total rainfall accumulations of 6 to 10 inches in isolated maximum amounts, isolated at 15 inches possible. Earlier they were saying like 20 inches, then they were saying 15, now it's 6 to 10, which is still a lot, but uh, just no reason to panic, you know? No reason to go out there and start filling up your gas tank and getting all bent out of shape, right? Good? Right. At least if you had a vehicle that was operating, which George's isn't. Maybe that's an act of God. Maybe God is, uh, that's a way of his protecting your, your ass. Yeah, protecting. That's what he's doing to me. Keeping you out of, well, don't want to get your expensive vehicle uh, involved in the storm, like getting all flooded out when in doubt. Because you know what happens once a car gets water inside of it? Throw it out. Okay. I'd much oh, rather yeah. have that. Or it's like if you have an accident in your pants in the car and you trade it in the next day. You do not drive that thing again. No matter how well, you know. There's just no way, at least psychologically, to ever get it out of there. So at any rate, I'm looking at that uh, radar. 
and I'll keep an eye peeled on it. But I would uh, start doing whatever you're going to do right now, which is not like panic. You know what I'm saying? I'm dying out of here. But I would, whatever uh, things you're going to be doing, I would do it now because it's uh, going to be sooner rather than later, okay? Oh, the Iraqi parliament will not meet on the Constitution today because uh, bada beep, bada boop, bada bop, and they're too busy uh, killing each other. As a matter of fact, insurgents from western Baghdad staged a sophisticated and well-coordinated strike against police checkpoints yesterday, leaving 14 dead and dozens wounded. Meanwhile, in the southern city of Najaf, fighting between followers of Shiite cleric Muqtada al-Sadr and demonstrators left five more people dead and ten wounded. But uh, everything is going really well, okay? Oh, we're fine. Yeah, it's going tremendously well. In fact, it's going so well that more than uh, 1,500 paratroopers are headed toward Iraq to temporarily boost military strength during the fall elections, the Pentagon has announced. Things are going so well that they're sending more troops because uh, we really got it under control, and they had some tremendous planning for all of these things. And for the Civil War, that's already going on as I speak. I should probably play that thing. Lucky at last. Now you can get a little piece of quiet. Yeah, hi, <laughs> what are you doing here in Honolulu? When I went to here, I flew right over and dressed up like Connie Stevens. Just for you. Well, yeah, you're forcing me to do this. Huh? Hey, how about a nice Hawaiian punch? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here's George's poll from yesterday. I wish I could change 835 votes, which obviously you had a lot more, except for the fact that you weren't pumping it. No, I only mentioned it like well, twice. Well, you had other things going on, like the silly-ass poll we're taking today. I'm not going to like uh, get all... Our goal for the poll today is 100 votes. I wish I could change my weight, 252. My member size, 187. Well, I feel better because that was my vote, and I had a lot of company, obviously. What? You're talking about weight, right? No. <laughs> My hair, 85. My height, 77. My address, 65. Oh, especially now I'm thinking. A lot yeah. of folks are wondering, how come I'm here? You know, what a tropical swamp. My marital status, 57. My face, 37. My parents, 22. My gender, 17. My nationality, 17. My skin color, 10. And my boob size, 9. Hmm. That's because we don't have a lot of women listening. We forgot age. Someone sent an email saying you've age got would age. be good. That would be uh, excellent. In fact, I'd vote for that. Yeah, my age good. and member size, or just super size. <laughs> Sounds good. Super size. Twelve minutes after ten, we'll keep you posted on what's happening with this uh, whole hurricane uh, Chazara. It's not a hurricane yet, but uh, it's headed over those real warm tropical waters. You know what I'm saying? And it's going to start picking up steam and ah, blah, 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 you know, like that. As if you're not used to it, okay? A lot of rain and some winds. Not heavy winds, though. This isn't one of those uh, kind of things. So there's no reason to, like, extra panic. I would put the panic level at about a four and a half on a scale of ten. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? Okay, I'll say. No, as opposed to, like, a, uh, ah, you know, the sky yeah, is falling, the world is coming to win kind of thing. Just calmly buy some batteries. That's right. Buy some batteries, go out there and get your plywood. Uh, you don't have to put the plywood up just to drift around on it. <laughs> Yeah, you can right. just float around on it. And, of course, some of the people out there can float already. Neil, God. Oh, look at famous naked people. All right. Oh, look at famous naked people. Absolutely. Celebrity sex tapes. Pamela Anderson started it with Tommy Lee. Pornography. Then Paris Hilton, she made a tape where she went just a little too far. And now she's a star, famous naked people. There's Colin Farrell's come. Famous naked people. Our Carrie likes them young. Look what they're doing. 
Making these tapes to revive all their crappy careers. Everyone leers, they're bumping uglies. And when you think that it just could not get any worse, here comes Fred Durst, famous naked people. Oh my god. In homemade video. Famous naked people. Wish they put on some clothes. Shame on you for showing off your worst, Fred Durst. 1018 at 560 WQA, and we got 179 votes on today's poll, which is not very important, okay? It's the Pat Robertson, you know, it followed out of that. It flowed from it. Yes. Which mm-hmm. religious nut? I beg your pardon? It oh, mm-hmm. speaking of a religious nuts. <laughs> and here in Idaho, it's worth it. A mom named Tammy Pruitt wanted me to do it. 179 votes. Uh, which religious nut do you hate the most? And you just heard his voice, George W. Bush, whose famous uh, line is, uh, will live for all time. <laughs> 74 votes. Louis Farrakhan, 23. He's not going to catch the Bushmeister. There you go. Pick it on those dark folks again. Jerry Falwell, 20. Uh, 20. Pat Robertson's only got 17 in spite of his uh, call to assassinate Hugo Chavez. Jesse Jackson, 11. There you go. Pick it on Al Sharpton, 8. There you go. Jimmy Swaggart, 8. James Dobson, 7. From Hocus Pocus, Focus on Your Family. The Pope, 7. He got my vote. Dr. Uh, D. James Kennedy, 3, from the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church of Hate and Anti-Semitism. And none of them, I'm a religious nut, one. we got one religious nut out there, okay, who's going, blah, 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 and I'm sure I know who that is. And anyway, speaking of that, at any anyway, conservative religious broadcaster, and we better talk fast, George, because we got a ball game. Pre-game at 1.30, okay. Marlon's on deck, Marlon's at the Brewers. They lost to Milwaukee again last night, 6-4. to four. Am I right, Josh? That's right. That's not good. No, it's not. And I'm going to tell you, do you think that Ira Winderman is boring? Mike Berardino makes under Ira Winderman seem like a Mexican jumping bean in heat. That's how terminal he is. Oh, my God. That 8 to 9 hour, you're welcome, Joe Rose, by the way. We hand it right over to you. Here, just put it on a silver platter. I hand the entire sports audience, the sports nerd audience, right over to Joe. He, in fact, that's the ticket. 8 to 9 hour. I mean, this uh, Clarence and uh, any, anybody else who participated in that madness. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to start, you know, giving my opinion about anything. What do you know? Boy, that is swill. Well, that's because that's I got a chance to hear a little bit of that this morning, which I every now and then when, like, uh, kids are out of school, like they are right now, and so George comes in a little bit later than usual, so I get to hear Hank or This Morning Guilty, and there's, uh, oh, my goodness, ba 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 Oh, jeez. Just, hey, Mike, you're not a bad guy, I'm sure, but uh, you are terminal, coma-inducing. You are so boring, you could put uh, a cattle of uh, cockroaches to sleep, a herd. That's what I heard. I heard. I heard. Conservative religious broadcaster Pat Robertson apologized yesterday. Now, here, here's the best part of this whole apology is he's a freaking liar. And then later in the broadcast, you're like, well, maybe I did say that. You're just a liar. You're a crazy person. And there's two million uh, lemmings following this maniac, sending them their money. Well, you know, that diamond mine thing didn't work out real well in Africa. And then the gold mining in uh, Liberia didn't work out too well with his buddy Charles Taylor. So uh, he's got to, you know, make the big bucks from these uh, two million old uh, uh, coots out there. The old coots. Conservative religious broadcaster Pat Robertson apologized for calling for the assassination of Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez during Monday's broadcast of his 700 Club program. Is it right to call for assassination? No, and I apologize for that statement. He said in a written statement. Earlier, here's the best part. Earlier, Robertson, now, of course, we've all, you saw the clip, right? Yeah, yeah. How many times we all see it? About 30, man. On the radio. Yeah. Earlier, the Robertson said his remarks about Chavez were taken out of context that he never called for the killing of the Latin American leader. I didn't say assassination. I said our special forces should take him out. And take him out can be a number of things, including kidnapping. There are a number of ways to take out a dictator from power besides killing him. I was misinterpreted by the Associated Press, but that happens <laughs> all the time, Robertson said on the 700 Club. And then, of course... Uh, we've all seen the clip, and then he had to later retract because uh, somebody said, hey, they all saw you say, oh, here's the uh, exact quote. If he thinks we're trying to assassinate him, I think we really ought to go ahead and do it. Do it. It's a whole lot cheaper than starting a war. Assassinate, that was the word. We ought to go into, we have the ability to take him out, and I think that the time has come that we exercise that ability, Robertson said. We don't need another $200 billion war to get rid of one strong-armed dictator. It's a whole lot easier to have some of the covert operatives do the job and then get it over with. Take him out. Assassinate. Maybe not take him out to dinner. Yeah, yeah, take him out for a, a meal. Maybe take like him out for a nice bath and a hot shower and right. then uh, and a shave and then a slit his throat. Man, you so the poll today is what religious nuts you have the most, hate the most, and that's why we're doing it because he's crazy and there are a lot of uh, you know the whole religious thing just 
It's the bane of my existence, the fact there are so many, including a lot of you folks out there. I, I know you can't help it because you were brainwashed very, very thoroughly and very well by your parents when you were young and by the uh, religion Nazis. So you just can't help yourself because they took away that part of your brain which allows you to realize what a pile of crap it all is and a bunch of man-made BS because basically people are afraid to die. They're afraid to say, I'm dying over here. And so therefore, uh, whether it's the Muslims or the Jews or the Goyim or whoever it is, oh, yeah, you're going to like live in heaven. You're going to be up there with God. You're going to be up there with the virgins. Yeah, right. You're going to be rotting in a box and that's it. So enjoy yourself right now and cut the crap. And stop acting like some kind of a... Uh, see that? Most people are emotional cripples, you know? Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm thinking of somebody uh, who was in there this morning who's a nice guy, but he's uh, an emotional cripple. I was thinking about him when I was shaving this morning. Then I don't want to go into the details of what I was thinking about, but just emotional cripple, you know? Oh, I'm sorry. I had the volume up on the TV. Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez, popular with the poor at home, offered uh, yesterday, uh, Tuesday, to help needy Americans with cheap supplies of gas. We want to sell gasoline and heating fuel directly to poor communities in the U.S., the populist leader told reporters at the end of a visit to communist-run Cuba. Chavez didn't say how Venezuela would go about providing gasoline to poor communities. Venezuelan state oil company PDVSA owns Citco, which has 14,000 gas stations in the U.S.A., and I guarantee you that Pat Robertson ain't sticking no Citco gas in his thing. The offer may sound attractive to Americans feeling pinched by soaring prices at the pump, but not to the U.S. government, which sees Chavez as a left-wing troublemaker in Latin America. Let's take him out! Gasoline is cheaper than mineral water in oil-producing Venezuela, where consumers can fill their tanks for less than two bucks. You're paying almost three bucks a gallon, and they can fill their whole tank for less than two bucks. Average gas prices have risen to 2.61 a gallon in the U.S. That's for like uh, regular, like uh, low test, for like uh, half watered down. Chavez said Venezuela could supply gasoline to Americans at half the price they now pay if intermediaries who speculated and exploited consumers were cut out. Venezuela supplies Cuba with generously financed oil and plans to help Caribbean nations foot their oil bills. Chavez in Cuba to attend the graduation of Cuban-trained doctors from 28 countries was seen off at the airport by Cuban President Fidel Castro. Incredible. Washington's accused the two leaders of being a destabilizing influence in South America, so we better take them both out. Chavez and Castro offered to give poor Americans free health care and trained doctors free of charge. All of those terrible things. Now, guess who were the first ones to sign on to Venezuela's oil plan for the Caribbean? After Fidel, of course. Of course. Let me give you a clue, Mon. Jamaica? Jamaica became the first Caribbean nation to finalize an agreement with Venezuela on a new plan for the South American nation to supply oil to countries throughout the region under below-market terms. Prime Minister P.J. Carlissimo, or P.J. Uh, Patterson, emerged from a private meeting with Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez late Tuesday to announce the details of Jamaica's participation in the petro Carib initiative, a plan to offer oil at flexible terms to 13 Caribbean nations. Under the agreement with, uh, with Jamaica, Venezuela will provide oil at a discounted rate of $40 a barrel compared with the more than 60, it's about 66, that it now costs on the world market. How do you like that? So even though Jamaicans, man, they're getting a good deal, and here we are getting the, uh, long, the short end of the... Cube! Huh? How about that? Yeah, we're getting the long end of it. I don't want to tell you where we're getting it. Rectum. That's where we're getting it. And thank you again, Mr. President, before I forget, for those low bargain basement gas prices. If we could find that punk that called that day, that was like, uh, you know, back during the campaign last year for the presidential election. Or, or was it, maybe it was longer ago than that. Maybe it was right after the Iraq attack. Right. The illegal and outrageous and butcherous and slaughtering Iraq attack based on a pile of lies. Uh, I think it was right back then. And that punk calls in, oh, thank you, Mr. President, for those low Assuming, of course, that we're going to stick our Cube. right up to, those, uh, to the oil refineries in, in uh, Iraq. Yeah. Surprise. Even they're standing online for two, three hours to get gas in Iraq because of the fact it's all screwed up and because the insurgents keep, like, setting uh, the pipelines on fire. All of these uh, sure. minor things. We've got to fight them terrorists. Because the country's in the chaos. 27 after 10, so we got the Marlin pregame in one. No mo today. What a good break he catches. Because it looks like the eye of the storm is right off of his house, as a matter of fact, right by his place. And you want to know why? Because God is PO'd at certain people. Do, 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 not to do, mention do. any names. Marlins at the Brewers at 205, pregame at 130, thank the Lord. Curtis Stevenson follows uh, the baseball game. Hurricane Hotline at 7. Boy, there'll be a hell of an audience for that, followed by the Beast from 9 to 10. Was <laughs> oh, he still alive? And then the Eddie Kaplan Show, 10 to 2. That's our award-winning lineup here at WQM, and we apologize in advance. That the end of the world is going to come next Tuesday at 4.30 p.m., and the Department of Health has requested homeowners to unplug all electrical appliances, turn off radios and TV sets, and disconnect gas stoves and furnaces. 
the post office recommends that you mail early in the day. And for those with automobiles, alternate side of the street parking will be suspended. That's the end of the world next Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. Mark it down. Bill Clinton never sang to the grand jury, but he's singing now on the hot new CD, Bill Clinton Croons His Favorite Tunes, featuring the former president's versions of classic hits like this one from Pink Floyd. Come and hear, dear girl, have a cigar. You're gonna go far. <laughs> All the way, I hope. <laughs> Bill Clinton croons his favorite tunes. Also includes this great Beatles song. Monica Lewinsky. She's overweight, but she knows how to act on a date. <laughs> yes, yeah, she was great. <laughs> and this, the time party track from Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. She's the entered with the blue dress, blue dress, blue dress, entered with the blue dress on. Wow! At least until I found the zipper. <laughs> if you fondly recall when the Oval Office was rocking and nobody bothered knocking, then get your copy of Bill Clinton Prunes His Favorite Tunes today. Yeah, when a history of the human race is written, uh, they'll discover that the USA had impeachment proceedings against the president for lying about his sexual antics, and we got a president who's got more blood on his hands than Carter's got uh, pills, and but a beep, but a boop, but a and life goes on. It's worth it. It's well worth it because, you know, this PNAC business, the Project for New American Century, certainly mm-hmm. anybody out there with an IQ larger than their thumbnail, you ought to, like, read up on it a little bit. I mean, you know, we've been telling you about that for years, but maybe right now you'd find out that long before there was any 9-11, they already had all these plans to do all of these All of these things. Devious plans. Yeah. And, of course, one of the things that they said in order to get the public to go along with their plans would be to have kind of like a Pearl Harbor-like catastrophe happen. Yeah. You don't mean like 9-11, do you? Huh? Oh, my God. Wow. At any rate, uh, probably take a call or two today, and I'm sure that we're not going to get deluged. We're going to get deluged with rain. In fact, I'm looking at that Doppler radar right now, and it's looking like blobby, baby. Bobby said it's looking blobby all along the East Coast. Look at that. Another reason not to be in that tropical swamp. Big blob up there by um, Pompano Beach. In fact, there's a big blob right over the racetrack right now. Now, I guess it would be in bad taste to say who it might be because he's no longer with us. But nevertheless, you know what I'm saying? What are you saying? My big blob friend that used to be at Pompano Park all the time. Oh, yeah, that would be sad. Miss him already. Good guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, big blob over Miami. And where you are, there's, uh, it's, it's uh, coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's fine. And sooner rather than later. I, I want to just repeat that again because this business about, well, overnight, I'd start getting ready for, like, uh, some stuff. Like, uh, oh, four, five, six o'clock this afternoon. I mean, what the hell could I possibly know sitting up here looking out the window with that beautiful sunshine and about 72 degrees right now? What, what could I possibly know? Nothing. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. You know, after the first attack on the Trade Center in 93, they had threatened to come back. But right. we were too busy with penis gate to yeah. uh, keep up with these hot beats. Mm-hmm. So. That's what I just said. WQAM, Hello. Hey, how you doing, Pally? Okay, Pally, what's up? Uh, two things. Um, we're all like on a technology cutting edge here, but if they would have had this technology back in the 50s and 60s and things, it's just all relative, Neil. I'm in a farming-related industry, and this is going to, whatever happens, it's going to go back into the golf reform and uh, produce nationwide to uh, distributors. And, uh, you know, they're on pins and needles trying to make sure they're going to have product, and they don't even know if they're going to have product. But... Everybody has this Dobler radar now. It's just amazing. And um, yeah. believe me, that's 10 years old. I have a friend in the military. He says they re- every 10 years they'll release stuff. to the- They had this 10 years ago in the government. Uh, mm-hmm. But we have this technology now. Thanks for taking the call. Okay, have a great day. How do you like that? They had it 10 years ago, but in the meantime, but a beep, but a boop, but a bop. Well, they uh, do whatever they want, you know? Yeah. Your government lies, they cheat, they steal, they rape you, they take your they take your money, they take your property with that eminent domain crap. Whatever the hell they want, they just go ahead and do it. And you're like powerless. And if you want to speak out now, once upon a time you could speak out. And if you speak out now, like Cindy Sheehan, then they schmear you, man. It's the new schmear game. They schmear you and they dump all over you. And then they immediately bring out a bunch of other, like like the, uh, you know, the carry schmear job they did. What, was, what do they call that group? The, uh, the Swift uh, Boat Veterans Swift for Truth. Swift Boat Farbison Right Wing uh, Liar. Uh, yeah, they're almost as honest as Pat Robertson, but not <laughs> quite. Oh, he didn't say anything about assassinate. Line 9, it's always good for a hoot. QAM, hello. Jumbo. Like I said, Line 9, I think we ought to like, take off the phone, don't you? Uh-huh. That would be a good idea. Just, just mention that in passing. WQAM, hello. It's my birthday. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> well, what a shame, huh? I knew there was some other reason beside the storm to uh, hold your head down, be in great dismay. WQAM, hello. Like I said, there are going to be a lot of good calls today because these people today are saying one thing, basically. I have no lie. Oh, wait, the first couple were all right, like human beings. Mm -hmm. First That's guy to repeat it back to me what I just got to here saying. WQAM, hello. Hey, you think if we rub Katrina, she'll come faster? <laughs> good one. Oh. I'll get out and try. Yeah, I think I'm uh, hitting that. <laughs> now, I'm not. I'm sorry, man, but man, you got Penny Nance in your pants. <laughs> yeah, you better watch it. You're going to get Penny from heaven. Two or three, anyway. So I'm looking at that Doppler radar and looking at Hollywood. I bet you late tub and Hollywood isn't going to be doing much of a business today. And they're probably relieved about never that. Know. Because it seems like they don't want to be doing a lot of business. You know what? Get that Trying to get all those people to go over there and read those rave reviews about... And then we got those faxes just dumping all over them, which they ought to be pleased about that. They ought to be very happy because they don't want, like, too much business. Did we ever find out if they're still making those cheeseburgers or, or we not? We never did. Well, I'll be damned. So swim over there today and uh, find out for us. 240 votes. Which religious nut do you hate the most? George W. Bush, 104. How do you like that, W.? Abu Ghraib. Louis Farrakhan, 27. Jerry Falwell, 26. Pat Robertson, 25. Liar, thief, maniac, crook. Serious crook. Jesse Jackson, 15. James Dobson, 11. Jimmy Swagger, 10. Al Sharpton, 9. The Pope, 8. D. James Kennedy, 4. Virulent. And none of them, I'm a religious nut. Solamente uno. we got one religious nut out there. Hmm. 20 before 11 at 560 WQM. We got that Marlin pregame at 130 today. All we can say about that is, oh! yeah. Although you got lucky on Monday, man, with a pregame show at 1230. And just to show that they don't want to overdo it for you, the pregame tomorrow is at 12, uh, 145. So you only get a 50-minute reprieve. And then Clarence says to me, well, you know, with all this, of course, he was, only, he was winking at George, but I think he had other things in mind when he was winking at you. You fell. When he said it. But, uh, oh, yeah, how about uh, doing a show tomorrow, Neil? Uh, you know, the fact I'll be here nice and dry and out of uh, harm's way, et cetera. And some of you people won't, you know, you have to, like, swim to work. And I said, too bad. <laughs> yeah. And I said, the answer is, no. yeah, as loudly as I could. And he just kept winking at George, which got George a little bit unsettled. Get ready for the wildest Girls Gone Wild ever. It's Girls Gone Wild about Girls Gone Wild. Hey, baby, lift up that shirt and show her shit. That'll teach you to treat us like sex objects. You've never seen a Girls Gone Wild wet t-shirt contest like this. I'm going to spray you with this hose. And I'm going to spray you with bullets. Nothing makes girls go wild quite like the whole idea behind Girls Gone Wild. Hey, let's see some hot girl-on-girl -girl action. We got your girl-on-girl -girl action right here. To order Girls Gone Wild about Girls Gone Wild, call 1-800-SHOW-US-YOUR-T- Show us your what? Oh, 1045 at 560. Isn't that what he's about to say? Yes, something like that. I got the 11 o'clock advisory. See, I'm on top of this stuff, you know, like always. How many of these things have we been through already? About 30, man. About 30,000 of these hurricanes. Another reason to get that out of South Florida while you're still alive, okay, while you still have a chance, while you still have your life, life and limb and whatever, right? Right. Katrina gradually strengthening as it moves slowly westward across the Florida Straits towards southeast Florida. Oh, my God. A hurricane warning remains in effect for the southeast Florida coast from Vero Beach southward to Florida City, including Lake Okeechobee. A uh, tropical storm warning remains in effect in, for the Grand Bahama Island, Bimini, and the Berry Islands in the Northwest Bahamas. The warning has been discontinued for the remainder of the Northwest Bahamas. Some of you want to swim out there and check the casinos out. The hotels there are, uh, at any rate, a tropical. I don't want to talk about the Bahamas. Everything smells like wet dog. A tropical storm watch remains in effect for the east central Florida coast from north of Vero Beach northward to Titusville, including all of Merritt Island, and for the middle and upper Florida Keys from the west end of the Seven Mile Bridge northward to the south of Florida City. A tropical storm watch also is in effect for the Florida west coast from Florida City to Anglewood, including Florida Bay. At 11 o'clock this morning, the center of tropical storm Katrina was located near latitude 26.2 north, longitude 79.3 west, or about 55 miles east of Fort Lauderdale. Oh, my God. Katrina is moving toward the west near 6 miles an hour. It's slowed down a little bit, but it's still uh, creeping along. This general motion is expected to continue with some decrease in forward speed during the next 24 hours. So there you go, Chad Fort Myers. See, he's the one that's telling us, oh, it's going to be sooner rather than later. Uh, it's slowing down, which is not good because the slower it goes, the more rain it's going to drop. Right. See? Don't like that. On this track, 
course, and this is from the National Weather Service, so I trust them more than I trust any uh, jackass on CNN, any lying sack of crap, Chad Fort Myers or Sky Miles O'Brien or that simple bubblehead Soledad. Oh, my God. On this track, the center should be near or over the southeast Florida coast later tonight or early Friday morning. So I apologize for being influenced by this jackass on there on CNN. Whatever they tell you, it's a pack of lies. They suck. We do like Susan Candiotti. Other than that, if, if like a H-bomb fell on CNN and took them all out. Yeah, when in doubt, take them out, right? Right. No. We would have a party. We'd celebrate. Tropical storm force winds extend outward to up to 70 miles from the center. Automated observing station at Settlement Point on Grand Bahama Island recently reported sustained winds of 33 miles an hour. Well, whoopee do. Huh? What's the big sinus with that, right? Mm -hmm. 33 miles an hour? I need enough to shake a coconut. The estimated minimum uh, central pressure is 997 millibars. Storm surge flooding of 2 to 4 feet above normal tide levels, along with large and dangerous battering waves, can be expected near and to the north of where the center makes landfall in Florida. Storm surge flooding of 2 to 4 feet above normal tide levels, along with large and dangerous battering waves, I'm dying over here. can also be expected in areas of onshore winds uh, and the Bahamas. Storm surge values will gradually decrease in the Bahamas later today as this thing blows by. Due to its slow forward speed, Katrina is expected to produce a significant heavy rainfall event over the northwest Bahamas and South Florida. Total rainfall accumulations of 6 to 10 inches with isolated maximum amounts of 15 inches are possible. Isolated tornadoes are possible over southern Florida and the Florida Keys. Oh, my God. Repeating the 11 a.m. Uh, position, 26.2 north, 79.3 west, movement near uh, west, near 6 miles an hour, and et cetera, and so on. Next one is at, uh, let's see, 1 o'clock, the next advisory. Well, we'll okay. be right on top of that. Huh? Like Stink on Greg, we'll be right on it. Won't we? Yeah, like that. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Is this Neil? Yeah. Hey, Neil, what's up, buddy? It's Brooklyn Joe. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Brooklyn Joe? Good. Where I was just over by... Uh, Pompano down, I was driving on Power Line, and it's uh, yeah. not that bad over there. Now, it's the raining, so what's the big simus, right? Yeah, hey, what the hell's the big deal? I love Rain's this hurricane weather anyway. Yeah, there you go. It's a good, good day to go outside and stand. Hold on to something electrical. It's a good idea. Grab some of those power wires, right? Do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Put you out of your misery. Oh, speaking of misery, Doug Thompson from the Rant. He's the uh, founder and publisher of that fantastic website, Capitol Hill Blue, that is George's favorite. Yes. Vets and the Coward, that is a great column, it was on our website, I believe. Didn't we put it on for today, Josh? Yes. Vets and the Coward. It's short. It's right to the point. He doesn't, he doesn't pull any punches, man. No BS. In fact, this is about BS. The man who dishonored American veterans by hiding out from the Vietnam War in Texas National Guard added an insult to injury this week by shamelessly invoking memories of those who died in the war as a pathetic excuse to continue his illegal and failed war in Iraq. Bush's lame attempt so disgusted veterans attending the VFW annual convention in Salt Lake City that many of them wore BS protector earmuffs during his speech to the group on Monday. Oh, get your BS protector earmuffs out, Lots. especially if you have a meeting at QAM. Memo to the dimwit now living at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. When the vets who actually fought for their country stop buying your bullshit, you're in a lot of trouble. Truth is, veterans, especially those who served in Vietnam, have long distrusted W. They know he hid out from the war, using his daddy's connections to get bumped to the head of the line to get into the Texas Air National Guard to avoid serving in Southeast Asia. They've seen the enlistment documents where he opted out of overseas service, an extra step to make sure he stayed, stayed stateside during the war. Real veterans can smell a coward, and Bush stinks like a dead rotting carcass, <laughs> yellow through and through, a cardboard... Yellow through and through, a cardboard cowboy who can sign an executive order sending American men and women to their deaths in Iraq, but one who didn't have the courage to stand up and fight for his country when he had a chance. Many vets joined in the patriotic fervor that followed the 9-11 terrorist attacks and supported our military actions in Afghanistan to try to bring al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden to justice. Some backed the invasion of Iraq, choosing to believe Bush's justifications for war, justifications that turned out to be manufactured evidence and outright lies. Now more and more vets see Bush for what he is, a lying, sniveling coward who doesn't deserve to be called commander-in-chief. They see a man who sent Americans to die in a war based on false pretenses and now has the gall to try to invoke the memories of real heroes to try and rationalize his illegality, immorality, and cowardice. They don't buy it. Why should they? They served their country in a war. He didn't. He hit out like a spoiled little rich kid, afraid to stand up and face the enemy. Ironically and sadly, the coward who used the National Guard to avoid service in conflict is now the president who sends reserve and guard units to fight and die in his own dirty little war. Veterans know Bush sold out this nation, its honor and dignity, by invading a country that posed no immediate threat to this nation and waging a war that didn't need to be fought. They know the blood of more than 1,800 Americans, 1874, by the way, more than 1,800 Americans forever stains the hands of a coward named Bush and every fool who supports him in his war. 
They also see Bush as the president who cut their benefits, reduced their cost of living allowances, and sent troops into battle without proper equipment, armor, or safeguards. The veterans who serve their country have no use for someone who did not. They have no use for George W. Bush. How do you like that? Here's like a, a message from Mark. Oh, that's right. That's, that's the accurate percentage, by the way. Uh, Hugo Chavez, not only has he got a 70% approval rating, but he got 70% of the votes in the election. And then, and then the best part of that is that the right-wingers are saying, oh, yeah, but that was a fixed election. And believe you me, if anybody knows about fixed elections, they're the ones. They're the expert. They have the expertise. God forbid we should ever have a fixed, a fixed election in the USA. Mark says, today George Bush's approval rating is at 46%. I saw 38% the poll we had on there the other day. Wasn't it, Josh? 38%. I don't remember. Yes. Through approval uh, through a pro approval polls of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez at 70%. Any way we can make a trade, we'll even throw in Dick Cheney and Condoleezza to sweeten the deal. I say it sounds like a, a match made in heaven. And we get those low gas prices, too. What do you say? Let's, Let's get Hugo it. Chavez in there right away. Or at least uh, Cesar Chavez. You get some cheap lettuce. <laughs> what? Oh, look at that. The statement, Robertson says, quote, is it right to call for assassination? No. And I apologize for that statement. I spoke in frustration. I apologize for that statement. How, how come they have all these silly broads on here reading the news, man? It's, it's embarrassing. She got about as much credibility, especially since she married that lard-ass, pill-popping, right-wing, hypocritical phony. That doctor-shopping piece of turd. Darren Kagan, my ass. So you got the 11 o'clock advisory there, a lot of rain and a little bit of wind, and uh, 33 miles an hour, that one in Augusta, there. where was it, somewhere in the Bahamas? And, of course, God's trying to blow them off the face of the map, and I don't blame him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What are you saying? In fact, if he was smart, he would take, yeah, yeah, take them out, too. Like Pat Robertson says, when in doubt, just take them out. <laughs> and starting October 1st, it's already the 25th of August. Let's hear it. Man, October 1, when in doubt, take them out in Florida. Another good reason not to be in that damn state. Oh, man. You look at somebody cross-eyed or, like, uh, you give them a look that they don't appreciate it, mm, right. they just blow your crap away, and your fat-ass governor says, nice job, well done. Crazy. Oh, speaking of the war and, uh, and right-wingers, the, um, the crusty American Legion, you think the VFW are a bunch of old toads, the American Legion, which has 2.7 million members, has declared war on anti-war protesters, and the media could be next. Speaking at its national convention in Honolulu, which Hawaii, by the way, was the first uh, state just passed a, a bill to put in uh, gas uh, cap prices. Good. A cap on gas, not, not on your gas cap, but a, a cap on gas no, prices. Although, uh, who the hell can afford to live there anyway? If you can afford to live in Hawaii, you don't need a, ga a cap on gas prices. I mean, it just costs uh, arm and ten legs. Anyway, speaking at its national convention in Honolulu, the group's national commander of the American Legion called for an end to all public protests and media events against the war, even though they're protected by the bill. Who ever heard of such business, huh? These are supposedly the self-proclaimed uh, the proclaimed patriots. Yeah, the American Nazis. Yeah, and, all, and end to all protests. Now, they were just goose step along Shut and up. you will obey. The American Legion will stand against anyone and any group that would demoralize our troops or worsen. See, that's always the excuse. Oh, if you're against the war, you're demoralizing the troops. Right. Maybe that's why 58,000 kids came home in body bags in Vietnam. Or worse, endangered their lives by encouraging terrorists to continue their cowardly attacks against freedom-loving peoples. Thomas Cadmus, national commander, told delegates at the group's national convention in Honolulu, the delegates voted to use whatever means necessary to ensure the united backing of the American people to support our troops and the global war on terrorism. They'll take whatever steps are necessary. When in doubt, maybe they'll take you out if you like protest, huh? Pile of crap. Bunch of senile old coots with those silly-ass caps they wear. Is that the American Legion or the VFW or both? I think they both wear. So yeah, they both have. got their own headgear. See, it's the battle of the headgear again, like I've always told you. 10.57, boy, it just seems like uh, this show is going to end like real early, like about 1.30 today. That's a I shame. Wish. I beg your pardon? I said I wish. <laughs> it's gonna be, it'll be 1.30 before you know it, before you can say, I'm dying over here. This is the Neil Rogers Show. Do, 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 do. This is your brain. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I feel so mad that I can't refrain. Oh my, let's go eat up Mick Jagger. He's just a pair of lips with no brain. Oh no, let's go eat up Mick Jagger. Oh man, don't start me up and don't put me down. Don't put me down. I could have fun knocking him to the ground, the ground, the ground, and oh my. Let's go beat up Mick Jagger. He's a little limey maggot. Let's go beat up Mick Jagger now. Oh my. He's 
screw you, man, heck, Jagger. <laughs> you had better shut up fast. Cause if you don't, I'll have to open a big old can of whoop ass. <laughs> hey, Jenny, hand me that whoop ass can opener. <laughs> The stones aren't on my side. No, they ain't. The stones aren't on my side. No, they ain't. No, they ain't. They say that they don't like my foreign policy. They think I don't know Jack. I think they're smoking crack. And they best not be talking smack about me. Hey, hey. See, there's three for the price of one. I figure they're all like in the same uh, same vein, so why not like uh, bunch them together, right? When in doubt, lump them out. Absolutely, it's not like a medley. So I'm looking at the uh, short term, the uh, short range uh, loop right now, the radar. Yeah. And that uh, that Chad uh, Fort Myers, whatever the hell his name is, on CNN. I, I went over to MSNBC because CNN is just uh, full of crap. Just like just like he's about as accurate on that as he was on that Air France jet that overran the uh, runway at Pearson. He hasn't got any idea what he's talking about. What is sure to be a wet system? We're moving billions of gallons of water in order to create more space, just in case we get those forecasted five to ten, ten inches with that possible ten inches of maximum. See, I think that there's a great slogan that might put them on the map because that Rita Cosby bitch. She sure ain't going to do it. If you want the Emmys, tune into MSNBC. That's good. Isn't that good? Sell it to them. I think I ought to be their promoting guy, man. I ought to be in charge of uh, Couldn't do any worse than they're doing already. How many viewers they got? About 30, man. About every cable system in the world, they got about 30 people watching. Pretty sad. For the Emmys, tune into MSNBC. And then, of course, then you see some of the people they have on there, and you know they're lying. But at least it's a catchy slogan. The I looks like it's due east of... Do, 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 do. I was going to say Boca, but that would be stretching a little bit. I would say more like uh, Deerfield Pompano. All right. But it doesn't look to me like it's going south. See, is it spinning no. around? But it is moving very slowly, so it could... In fact, I'm sure that the weather fairy has got his uh, very uh, well-used finger all sharpened up and is moving that thing right into, right into your backyard, wherever you are, you know? If you're in uh, Homestead or if you're in uh, Fort Lauderdale or if you're, like, in Jupiter, he's moving that thing uh, right in your direction. He's going to move that finger right in side your way. I was going to say Uranus, but that oh, would be bad. Oh, no, you can't do that. Can't say that. Can't, sorry about that, Pe Penny and uh, Joyce. That Joyce, she did one hell of a job. Uh, not. You're an idiot, Joyce. You're a simpleton, man. I'm going to tell you one thing. She's taking the Beasley's down, that Joyce. Nice going, sweetheart. You are incompetent. You are useless. I'm starting to root for the other side. At any rate, there's uh, what the deal we got right now. In fact, if you want to go, the Sun Sentinel's got a pretty good uh, thing on there. Although, quite frankly, I went to the National Weather Service radar. And the short-range loop. Put that thing in motion, baby. Click on the loop and watch the loop, the loop, and see the dark yellows out there, the real bright yellows. But right now, it's just like uh, like the guy said. So it's raining as if uh, that's a novelty in South Florida in the summertime, right? And the mosquitoes are as big as uh, bowling balls. But other than that, everything's just fine. Am I correct? Oh, we're fine. Oh, fine. Billionaire television producer John DeMaul, behind the pioneer show Big Brother, will test the limits of reality TV with a program in which a woman searches for a potential sperm donor to conceive a child. His new t those Dutch men, they are such a bunch of perverts, you know. Any excuse to put anything, anything sexual on the air. I love it. Anything dealing with drugs and sex Great. and sex and drugs. Perverts! Can't wait to go back. It's okay. It's not what it used to be. Too many uh, bizarre people there now. Too many people from Algeria and Morocco. I don't want to, like, single them out. But I will. His new TV station, Talpa, launched earlier this month, confirmed with a program called I Want Your Child and Nothing Else. Well, I bet you what's his name? Edmund on uh, Guiding Light will be proud of that. Is he really going to get uh, what's-her-name's baby? I just can't keep the name anymore after all these years. Huh? Rosemary's baby? Yeah, Rosemary's baby. Uh, I Want Your Child and Nothing Else, but gave no further details about the show due at 1830 GMT on Wednesday. Well, 1830 uh, Greenwich Mean Time. What, what is that? Sounds mean. That's um, about, I don't know what it is, 1.30, 3.30? The, yeah, you ought to know these things. The Brits are, uh, Greenwich Mean Time, I think, is an hour behind the Brits, and the Brits are like five hours uh, ahead of us. Who knows? The plan is that we visit potential donors and, of course, on camera decide which man is most suitable, the 30-year-old woman. About 30, man. Who will feature in the program, said in an interview with the, the Telegraph newspaper. Oh, that's the Dutch paper, the Telegraph. Check on their website if you want the weather. Find out how many hours a day it's going to be raining before you go there. 
Afterwards, there will be artificial insemination, said the woman who was identified only as Jessica. Not Jessica, but Jessica, as in, yes. how do you like that? Oh, hmm. my God, I got a, oh, where is it? I got a perfect drop-in for that from your close personal friend who's probably going to get blow, blown away. Oh. Where is it? Those are boss. Yeah, boys the one who does the nose of Yessa. And he got one doing that? Yeah, yeah, he does. They're in there yeah, somewhere. It? Oh, here it is. Just a boss. <laughs> he is the best at moment. Do, 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 do. He's going to drown in this hurricane, uh, this storm. Anyway, uh, the show is a one-off competing with four other reality. Now, what does that mean, a one-off competing with four other reality TV programs, one of which follows five former prostitutes starting a cafe? The program, oh, I see, the program receiving most votes from viewers on Saturday after all these shows have aired will be turned into a series. Boy, it is, it's just amazing. The Telegraph also published an email address for men wanting to donate sperm to Jessica. Well, and of course, if we could find Jessica's picture and put it on our website, we may have some of our listeners out there wanting to donate something. Oh, Rita Cosby, live and direct, uh, gets exclusive prison tour and video of Vandersloot. And ahead of time, we said, you know, can we... Be sure and miss that tonight on MSNBC. If you want the MS, be sure and avoid MSNBC. And then, by all means, avoid CNN, the Nazi network. They are... Yeah, I'm not going to call it certainly not news. It's definitely the NN stands for Nazi network. Mm -hmm. B a bunch of suck-ups. I want to say it again, that that crap they had on Sunday night, supposedly that probing, uh, you know, they're actually having the gall to make, question the president and this illegal war. That was, that was such a wishy-washy, half-baked piece of turd, man, exactly what you'd expect from the suck-ups at CNN. You people blow, man. You're pathetic. You're embarrassing. I'm going with MSNBC from now on, from here on out. You, you stick with CNN there, and I'm sticking with MSNBC because I like the MS. I don't like MS broadcasting, but I do like M the MS. You know, it's kind of a Jew thing. Right. Thailand's prime minister is trying to ferret out a government minister who allegedly had a penis enlargement procedure, saying news of it is affecting the cabinet's reputation, a news report said yesterday. Who did it? Tell me, the prime minister told his ministers at a Tuesday cabinet meeting, triggering a round of banter and causing some to squirm in their chairs, the nation and newspaper be saying. Who done it? Last week, a woman being sued for defamation by a clinic after she claimed it gave her a face-disfiguring silicon injection said a cabinet member had received a penis enlargement injection at the same clinic and urged him to come forward as a witness in her defense. I wonder if he had a penis-disfiguring injection. He said, there's only one way to find out, I guess. <laughs> Go figure. Calling on the official through reporters on the steps of Government House on Tuesday, the woman said, The problem of my face is bigger than the problem of your penis. This has affected the reputation of the cabinet because... Oh, I wonder if they know Joe Zagaki. This has affected the reputation of the cabinet because the news went around the world. I don't want people to think the cabinet members are obsessed with this kind of thing. The newspaper quoted uh, the, the prime minister is telling his ministers. Speaking to reporters after the meeting, the agriculture minister said no one admitted to the enlargement procedure. Other ministers joked about various suggestions on how he could be identified. Oh, I can't imagine how. Can you? No, how? I don't know. Think about it. Hmm. MSNBC, man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm sharp every now and then, sharp as a marble. I'm on top of it. Don't forget, we got the Marlins. Uh, now, the Marlins haven't been too sharp the last couple of days. They better win today, or I'm saying, how many games they got left? About 45, Josh? Um, yeah, about that. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Exactly. I don't want to put you on the spot. Listen, you should know their record, won and lost, the percentage, how many games they are out of the wild card. You should be two. on top of this crap. Two, two yeah. out of the wild card. That's right. Well, that's a piece of cake. They can do that in a nice weekend. Yeah, they, you know, could beat Milwaukee. Now, let's see, what are they, about five and a half behind? Uh, yeah, they always seem to lose to the crap teams. When the Expos... Well, I mean, Milwaukee's not that bad this year. They're actually... Milwaukee, oh, give me a break. Well, they're Milwaukee in the wild card blows. race, too, That's but, you know. Ceiling. Are they in the wild card race? Yeah, they're... Too I mean, they're at the bottom blue. of it, but, you Too know. bad about the Blue Jays, just when they were starting to make a little bit of a move, now they're making a movement. You can, I can smell it all the way here. They were, they were really on the move, and then they went in Detroit, and now they like, lose every day, just when it looked like they might have a shot, but... They're, they're doing pretty good. They're like a mediocre 500 club. What's wrong with that? Pretty much. We'll settle with that. Anyway, let's not get too sports intensive because next thing you know, we'll be talking about hockey, okay? We'll be talking about not Chad uh, Fort, Myers, uh, Fort Myers guy on CNN, but Chad Kilger with the Leafs. Boy, he's weak. What's he doing on that team, huh? He's worse than Wade Belak. For years, Armstrong Ford of Homestead has always treated everybody like family, and they want to extend an offer to you to join their family. Ford Nation nationally has extended their Ford family plan offer through the 6th of September, and right now... At Armstrong Ford Homestead, they're going to give you the same great pricing that every Ford Motor Company employee and their families be getting. Not only do you get employee family pricing, you also still get Armstrong Ford's exclusive Tires and Batteries for Life program. 
And for a limited time with any new car purchased at Armstrong Ford, you're going to get a color TV free. So what's not to like? Pick up the phone right now and call David Rich at 305-247-5112. And be sure and tell him that fat boy told you to call. You won't get a better deal on a Ford anywhere in town. No bait and switch, no phony deals. In fact, I'm so sure of it, we'll bet you fat boy's life on it. This fantastic offer is only available at Armstrong Ford Homestead, where they always treat you like family. Armstrong Ford is proud to be locally owned and operated. Vice President and General Mangler David Rich says, Bring your family to meet our family. Armstrong Ford Homestead, you'll find them at US 1 Southwest 307th Street, just 20 minutes south of the 836. You won't get a better deal on a Ford. I'll say it again anyplace else, so why waste your time? Check them on the web at armstrongcars.com and then call David at 305 247 5112 and ask him about the Ford family plan today. Drive a few miles extra, but save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Sport Hole News from your community minded station, 560 WQAM. With your Sport Hole update, I'm Helena Keller. After a year of being in debt, Ricky Williams bought his first bag of grippy today. Hey, never mind that. You know, the other day I broke 70 on the golf course. You did? Oh, yeah. And that's a lot of clubs. <laughs> And now with the latest on the Ricky Williams press conference. Hey, by the way, son, yeah. I know this guy was an exploit diamond cutter. Really? Yeah. He mows the lawn at Shea Stadium. <laughs> oh, doctor. Oh, doctor. And speaking of doctors, doctor tells this guy to join a health club to take some weight off, see? Yeah. The guy loses 20 pounds in one week. How do you do that? The machine ripped his leg off. But um boom <laughs> And now this breaking story about Ricky Williams. You know, when I was taking a vacation in Honolulu, yeah. the hotel was so swanky, room service had an unlisted number. <laughs> I'm Helen Keller. I just started two minutes ago. I'm Helen Keller. Yeah, I'll I'll have more sport holding. The room in this joint was so small when I put the key and I broke the window. <laughs> well, what are you doing? Hold this trick in the book, kid. I'm like your copy on fire. <laughs> Hey, what are you looking at there? Helen and Keller, remember? What's the matter? You got no sense of humor? Easy on the paint, easy on the paint. All these times and never a dinner. Lemon IT at 560. No mold today. So you may be depressed about the uh, storm and the rain and the uh, stuff, but uh, there's something to be excited about. Do, 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 do. No more today and no more tomorrow. Oh! Got Marlins games both days. In fact, the Marlins at the uh, Cubs, I believe, tomorrow, right? Game time yes. at 220. Pre-game at 145, George. Oh, all right. Uh, that 15 minutes isn't like a, a major deal, but you know no, something? We'll Every it. extra minute counts, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm counting. Especially tomorrow when you're going to like be doing probably the show from oh. home. On the phone. Yeah, on the phone. How are you going to get there if you've got like uh, 15, 20, 80 inches of rain? I can swim. In fact, maybe you stop at Lake Tub and bring in lunch yeah. for everybody on I mean, the way. I swim over from Cuba. Swim like, over in the tub. Yeah, that's true. It came on a rubber well, raft. The Dolphins 212 votes on the poll so far, and we don't really care about the poll all that much. Although, now, where did John Ascroft come from? Oh, facts. I just uh, came in. Besides the place, hunger. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. He, sure, he may mm-hmm. not uh, be one of our favorites, but he sure can't sing. Which religious nut do you hate the most? Uh, hate. George W. Bush, 138, they hate. Louis Farrakhan, 37. Jerry Fallball, who's had that problem with that purple tinky winky and all those uh, gay cartoon characters, 35. Pat Robertson's right on Jerry's ass with 33, and people are starting to talk about it. Jesse Jackson, 19. James Dobson, an unctuous, oh, man, he is. Hocus, pocus, focus on your family. Al Sharpton, 11. Jimmy Swagger, 10. The Pope, 10. Silly old coot. Boy, I'll tell you one thing about this Pope, man. He is really... A card-carrying Nazi. Did, have you ever really looked at him? Oh, yeah, he's evil. He's like the emperor Man, from Star Wars. He, evil is the word. He is evil personified. It's written all over his puss. He looks like Riff Raff from the underdog cartoons. Man, he is bad, this Pope. And, of course, a million uh, Getschke showed up there in Cologne to, uh, you know, have a big party last weekend. What a! It just makes you want to cry and give a geschrei. Very sad. Isn't that what the Chinese say, geschrei? They do. I just hit the phone there by accident. QIM. That's okay, Neil. How about Benny Hinn, the healing Hindu? All right. Or your yeah. phone. Benny Hinn, okay. Uh, all right. He's a pack him in to be Hinn. Benny Hinn, put him on there. Uh, I left off. Let's see. Jimmy Swagger, 10, the Pope, 10, Dr. D. James Kennedy, 5. One of the most virulent anti-Semites ever to make uh, hay in South Florida. What is it making lots of hay. 
None of them. I'm a religious nut myself, one. And John Ascroft is one. I don't have any yet, but he will. But I don't have a lot of time to mess with that poll because I'm too busy on my Doppler radar, man. You know what I'm saying? What do you say? Well, I'm busy uh, checking it out. I want to stay on top of this thing so we can pretend like we know something that's going on. There's my loop. I've got it in motion, and it's, uh, I don't know. It's hard to tell, really. It's swirling around. I think the next time it makes, you know, that circular motion that uh, these storms do, next time it, like, swings around, that's going to tell you where that eye is going to hit. You know, keep your eye on the eye. All right. WDQAM, hello. QAM. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay. Did you see that your friend uh, Hank Goldberg did a little hot water? Oh, yeah, okay, fine. It. Whatever you say. As a matter of fact. Yeah, well, that makes three. <laughs> yeah, think or three. It makes three. Well, yeah, I'm right. Well, at least uh, he's consistent, okay? The Patrick Valenzuela Broadcasting. Speaking of broadcasters, Robin Bertolucci has offered former WMAL Washington host Michael Graham, who was fired from the ABC Radio News Talker after calling Islam a terrorist organization, a shot to fill in at Clear Channel's L.A. News Talker. Well, goody gumdrop for them. Aren't they a bunch of real broad-minded folks at KFI? Yeah. You think? Are you sure? Bertolucci said the station was offering Graham the opportunity because KFI still believes in free speech. Morning host Bill Handel announced his show this morning, or let's see, what they, uh, yesterday morning, that Graham will in fact fill in for KFI evening host John Ziegler this Friday night. Well, isn't that great, okay? WMAL, well, that's ABC again, you know? Mm -hmm. ABC. Just ask Lynn, your good close friend Lynn Samuels about ABC. She'll tell you some horror stories that'll make hair grow on your ass. WDQAM, hello. What the hell was that noise? WQAM, hello. Yes, we're conducting a service. Yeah, I bet you are. Of the biggest ass. I'll tell you what, drop your drawers and look in the mirror, man. You're it. WQAM, hello. How you doing? Or forget about the drawers, just look in the mirror. Pretty good. Um, I Did you hear about the Roberto Luongo arbitration hearing? I beg your pardon? The Roberto Luongo's arbitration came back. Yeah. He was awarded $3.2 million for one year, and I think he uh, didn't deserve even that. Why is that? Well, he hasn't. He, he's been a good goaltender, he, but he hasn't performed on the level of a Berdura or anyone else. Who's what are you talking about? What kind of defense is he? You gotta he's win. Playing, it he's doesn't matter. The goaltender in record is you're crazy. There's a typical South Florida hockey fan, man. He wouldn't know a hockey puck if you shoved a whole a dozen of them into his innards through into uh, with a gizzard. Give me a break. This is the most important, the most valuable player on that team who's played brilliantly, stood on his head for two years. Let me ask you this. If he's not so good, how come he keeps showing up on Canada's Olympic team? Like, again, this time, too, they picked him, huh? Every uh, time, because he's not so good. You quizzling, you silly ass. You're fair. Right. Didn't deserve 3.2. You're, you're another one of these guys. They got more money than Carter's got pills. They got plenty of money left over under the cap. Show some appreciation. Show the guy you want him to stick around, but instead what they'll do is chase him out of town now, like anybody else who might be good. And they'll continue having a horseball organization. Yeah, let's bring back some of those other great goaltenders like uh, Damaged Goods, like Trevor, uh, are you kidding me, kid? Somebody like that. What, what are you thinking about, man? Just, I, I just do not for the life of me understand how South Florida's got a hockey team. It, just, it makes no sense at all. It would be like Belarus having uh, you know, a Holocaust stand. I, I just don't get it. Do you? No. Nope. But you sure as hell don't. And, in fact, you're the living example of why there should not be a, a hockey team in South Florida. I'd rather go there than Hello. to a baseball. Are you guys open today? Are we open today? Yeah. What, what can we do for you? The sky is falling. Yeah. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yep. It's raining outside. I'm going <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh, they're going stir crazy, so they're going to call us. That's fine. We don't care. We're just here to kill another two hours and five minutes. Not that I'm counting you, understand. Right. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I had to call because that guy's a moron. How can he say that Roberto Longo is not a good goalie? What defense did he have? Exactly. He played behind a really porous, the worst defense in the league for two years and still stood on his head and kept him in a lot of games where they either tied or got a win only thanks to him. Game I, after game, I agree night 100%. after night. This guy wouldn't know hockey if uh, Foster <laughs> Hewitt popped out of his ass. <laughs> hey, I have one for your poll. Yeah. Uh, Billy Graham. Billy Graham, an excellent choice, and the, he's still alive, unfortunately. He's still just barely hanging on. Mm -hmm. All right, Neil, we're all going to die. Be careful. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I'm dying over here. I think that's what he was trying to say. Well, at least there's our uh, honest caller for you. We're all going to die. It's going around. Monty Hall turns 84 today. Good Canadian boy, Monty Hall. Let's make a deal, Monty. He made millions and millions, and then he got out of our face. You know, see, I like guys like that. Regis, 74, he's hanging on much too long, and they keep, they're trying to push him out. And he doesn't want to go, kicking and screaming. Just from that stupid-ass show, which we told you was a piece of crap show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Ooh. One of the worst game shows ever. Oh, it's getting good ratings. Let's put it on 18 days a week. you know. And, of course, there it went. Brutal. 
He turned 74 today. I think that Bob Barker and Regis, when you get to be an old coot, it's time to bail out. So, see ya. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Why don't you go back to Cuba, you spit bastard? This station presents Real American Heroes. Real American Heroes. Today, we salute you, Mr. Guy Who Leaves His Stupid Blinker On. Mr. Guy Who Leaves His Stupid Blinker On. Yes, we've all been stuck behind you, sir, wondering aloud. Is it going to turn here? No. Maybe at the next? No. Then maybe... No. You're gonna cause a bad car pile up. Perhaps, Mr. Guy Who Leaves His Stupid Blinker On, you are simply on a personal mission to drive around the entire globe slightly to the left. I don't find horn, but you wouldn't notice. Apparently, you don't notice anything. Maybe you'll notice this obscene gesture. You believe a left turn signal should be left on. And your right turn signal feels so right, you never shut it off. And so we dub you, Mr. Guy Who Leaves His Stupid Blinker On, a real American hero. Mr. Guy Who Leaves His Stupid Blinker On. Oh, he must be turning here. Nope. Oh, here. Oh, just turn. And don't forget, starting October 1st in Florida, that's right, all those blinker idiots who have to blinker on for like about a mile and a half, uh, they represent a threat to your safety, you know what I'm saying? And as right. a result, fat ass governor says, when in doubt, take them out. Isn't that the new slogan of the right wingers? When in doubt, take them out. That's what Pat said. Uh, they're doing a good job in Iraq, by the way. Now, here's a fact from somebody who obviously has good intentions. says, go to IntelliCast.com. They've got the best and most accurate radar and storm tracker, uh, which I already had been there. But I thought, well, I'll just recheck it just to see if he's right. And guess what? I would say... <laughs> now, the best radar for uh, what I'm looking for here, the short-range loop is the uh, National uh, Weather Service radar. Yeah. Don't you agree? I do. The short-range loop. I mean, it shows it out, you know, pretty f- well, well as far as you want it to, like uh, Bahamas and whatever. And uh, there it is. And it's raining. <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, it's raining over there. Oh, here's the MS, the MS. Not only Florida, but for the rest of the southeast as it makes its way across the peninsula and then eventually back up in two portions of the panhandle. It's going to be a long day. We'll be right here with you each and every half hour. Excellent. We want the MS from MSNBC. That's right. They are so pathetic, man. Now, you saw that Rita Cosby bitch. How can she Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> she, Does she look good? No. Can she speak? No. Has she got a voice? Not a great voice. Has she got any voice? No. Uh, is she uh, penetrating? No. Well, I don't want to get into that. But, I mean, what, what is that? What is it? So she was on Fox News. So right away, because, see, they don't understand one thing, and that is that, People are watching Fox for the other than O'Reilly, who's a uh, phenomenon, you know, on TV, not on radio. Radio, we still got that oh, point. Oh, but uh, but other than that, they watch Fox well because it's Fox because it's a religion. It's not a news outlet. It's a religious channel. It's a right wing fundamentalist Bible thumping. We hate everybody channel. That's Fox News. So whatever they got on there has got a number. I mean, if Greta's got a big number, what does that tell you? I mean, she is just. I, I've had I've had bowel movements that were more attractive than Greta. She, she's just grotesque. You should take some pictures of that. Plus, she's got a nasty, you know, she sounds like the water Nazi. She's got a nasty, gravelly voice. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but these right-wingers, man, you can't complain about their IQ or their taste because they have neither neither. they they just uh, idiots. That, of course, is why they like certain Abu Ghraib. other illiterate uh, goofballs. Dangerous ones, though, see? One thing to be illiterate and uh, a goofball, that's okay, but when you're a dangerous one and people are dying as a result. Oh, here's uh, some other goofball. Oh, it's Miss Mark Potter. Going to go out. Shelters are also opening hey, up Mark, this you're fair. in anticipation of the storm uh, making landfall somewhere in this area later today. Again, no one here is panicking. They are veterans of much bigger storms oh than my that one. God. But they are watching it closely. Again, they're concerned about the flooding, and residents here are just being asked to watch the news, watch the weather cast, yeah, watch so this. they know where the worst of this storm is hitting and at what strength later today. Back to you. All right, Mark Potter reporting there. You can get the latest on Tropical Storm Katrina by logging onto our website at msnbc.com. Excellent. Get the MS from msnbc.com, baby. She's really ugly, too. Uh, you know, and that's fine. I'm ugly, but I'm not on television. And was once upon a time. Boy, I'm still embarrassed about that thing. Thanks a lot, Marvin. You idiot. You quizzling. You uh, simpleton. You... You fairy. So I'm watching that thing, and like I said, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. I think perhaps that uh, some people are making a little bit more out of this than uh, need be. Like who? Like the weather hysterical people. 
The weather well, fairies? That's their job. I mean, you know, I see that thing is swirling out there, and it's uh, got a lot of rain, and uh, big simmers. Big deal. Five six seven oh five sixty. Pie. Maybe there's some other people out there who aren't like getting all. Like the other guy said, he's uh, driving in Pompano Beach right now. And there's a little rain coming down, and uh, we're not talking about gigantic, tremendous winds here. We're not talking about the end of the world. We're not talking about trees being uprooted or uh, you know your your dog being sent flying in outer space. Just uh, it's a storm. That's all. And maybe like a, a very very mild bargain basement hurricane category. Well, a very weak category one at best. By the time it hits shore and blows you all away, you know? I, that's all. Don't get all upset about it. I'm just sitting here very calm, cool, and collected, looking out my window, looking at the very sunny sky. What's the temperature in Toronto right now for uh, Paul Castronova, who I'm sure is listening? It's 22 Celsius, 72 Fahrenheit, A. Eh? Going to high today, sunny, no clouds, no rain, no nothing. Sunny in 26, that's 79, last time I checked Fahrenheit. There's Eric Lindros of the Maple Leafs. Oh! Get with it, Eric. Okay, cut the crap. Better wear a heavier helmet. Five six seven. Let's get some hockey talk on here. Let's get Rimmer lined up for a hockey show. You notice how uh, it's really interesting when I put these people on the spot because they're all like in bed together. So with Gildy and Denise Potvin, you notice how he like keeps sucking up to him because he's got to be there with him every. You got to see him every day, you right? Know? And now that he's going to be up there in that press box all the time doing those Panther games on the radio, the Gildy Meister, I think he's going to do okay. I'll guarantee you one thing: he won't be boring like some of the other sportscasters we've got in town. Not to mention Dave Van or uh, that uh, Rich Waltz guy on TV, who evidently has naked pictures of Jim Sarney with a billy goat. You got to be kidding me! Or maybe naked pictures of Jim Sarney with Billy Martin. I don't know what it is, but there's something there. Talk about a suck up! What's that all about? Guy comes into town, does a horseball job, is totally uh, see. It's like Jimmy Syphilis and Rich Waltz. I put them pretty much in the same category. Not ready for prime time. Unqualified is what they are. Inexperienced. They're just totally unqualified. So Josh wants to take the rest of the show to uh, rip an ass on Jimmy Cephalo and Joe Rose. I like Joe. No, I know we like him personal. I, in other words, he's doing a good job on the games. That's good. No, no, he, he wasn't, but he, he, he could be okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a work in progress. Are you starting with that crap, too? Exactly. A work in progress. Well, Boy, you must be uh, no, Joe, I, nervous. Joe, I think, can, can get I like better. Joe a lot. Joe Rose is a great guy, and he's an excellent broadcaster, but uh, he's certainly no mad dog. Oh, no. And he's work, and he's been working with a guy that's totally unqualified, and just Jimmy and Joe and Joe and Jimmy are talking back and forth to each other and not doing the description of the game, which is what you said. That's... <laughs> When I listened for the 15 minutes, it was uh, yeah. a and lot of stepping over. And the reason he's not doing play-by-play -play is because Jimmy is not a play-by-play -play guy, okay? He may be playing a little bit, but he's not doing play-by-play -play on the radio or off. Oh, I know. So we're pretty uh, upset about it, Jimmy, okay? Those Dolphins out there who miss Rick Weaver so desperately. And even Bill Zimfer was pretty good. Good guy, Zimfer. Good guy. Got screwed badly when somebody came. Oh, and do, 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 even do, do, missed do. the Doymeister. There, so I, I told you you'd miss him. They're Jones in for a Modicon, huh? No, seriously. Oh, and speaking of Mo, yesterday, so George, leading into the Mo show, being the bastard that you are, yeah. he like uh, had like about a minute. How long is that bit? About a minute. Mo, what, what is that thing called? Mo update? Yes. It's uh, 147. So he's got a, in fact, he probably ran over. I didn't. Oh. Two minutes till two yesterday, and so George plays that Mo update bit by Boca Brian going right into the Mo show. And Mo, do, 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 evidently, do, do, do. Or I don't know if he said anything on the air or not, because who then, why would I pay any attention? But uh, he evidently was P.O.'d about it, which means he's not making progress. He's regressing, okay? It's a radio show, Mo. Stop at the ego, okay? Stop at the baloney. Don't start slipping back into those old ways again, or they're going to bring back the muskrat. This is Neil Rogers. Do, 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 do. This is 560 G.A.M. Back in the classroom, I'm Tommy Lee. I'm studying nature, yeah. I'm kind of like a tree. When the schoolgirls call, you know what I'll do. I'm gonna take my books up to floor number two. Studying in the dorm room. Studying in the dorm room. Like me, 
Station famous job I will the show on NBC. Come on, let's hit those bucks. 747, 13 till noon at 560 WQM. The Marlins and the Milwaukee Brewers, a huge game this afternoon. Pre-game at 1.30. Marlins uh, at 2.05 start the game. Curtis Stevenson after the ballgame, hurricane. Then we got a bunch of stuff nobody wants to hear. And Eddie Kaplan at 10. I'm not going to promote that hurricane stuff. That's just, you know, it's just a commercial uh, holder is what it is. Wouldn't you say? Right. Although we don't want to get Donna Shalali all that out of shape again, because then she'll so, be like going after our billboards and oh gee, we've got balls. balls! Oh wow, good! Oh man, please, please, Donna, who are you kidding? I always thought she was kind of a ballsy bitch, but come to find out. Okay, how's that poll coming? I'll like uh, mention it one more time. Around, I would say like twelve forty, twelve forty ish. We'll have the one o'clock advisory on uh, this storm mm-hmm. that they're making such a big simus about. I mean, you know, it, it makes sense to like keep your eye on it and the storm too. But, uh, you know, this is not one I would get, like, all, bah! like, a spastic about, right? Why not? Although we do it's have some it. people in South Florida who specialize in spreading spasticity. I like that. Like elasticity? Right. Spasticity. Like Miss Norcross, she's a little spastic. In fact, I heard she's got a spastic colon. 377 votes. What religious nut you hate the most? 162 gets the score in the ire of our crowd. Abu Ghraib. And deservedly so. Louis Farrakhan, how come we didn't put Jeb Bush on there, too? Let's do it. With uh, Terry and her Chew. and all of his other religiosity and trying to stick religion into the jails and uh, uh, everywhere. Choose life, my ass. Louis Farrakhan, 42. Jerry Falwell, 41. Pat Robertson, 38. When in doubt, hey, Pat, take him out. Jesse Jackson, 26. James Dobson, 15. Focus, focus. He's, he's, he's really a lot worse than you think. Just that not that many people know that much about him. He is, I mean, you talk about Nazi, he makes Hitler look like a uh, Girl Scout. The Pope, 15, who makes them both pale into insignificance. You're right, he's got the face of evil, man. You look at him and you see Dark all, the, all the images of WW2 and the Holocaust all conjured up right now. And this crap about the Jews buying into his, yeah, his uh, you know, he's sucking, uh, up. he's sucking up to the Muslims and everybody else. Yeah, Don't kid yourself, he wants to convert everybody. They want you, man, especially if you're a cute older boy. The Pope, 15, Al Sharpton, 13, Jimmy Swagger, 12, D. James Kennedy, 6, the Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, who used to have that gay guy playing the organ there. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, you did. He, he was the organist. In fact, he may still be there. How do you like that? And he's gay. Oh, the gay brother, guy talk about, the organ? talk about a sellout. He's worse than Miss Fudge. Hey, Matt. You fair. Oh, brother, I'm so tired of that garbage. None of them. I'm a religious nut five. We've got five religious nuts out there. Good. Benny Hinn's got two. John Ascroft, too. Jeb Bush and Billy Graham uh, have got the big... Well, Bill, uh, Jeb just went on oh. so far. Well, Billy they feel sorry for because they know he's like one step away from death. Sort of like... Uh, and, of course, he'll be on Larry King again uh, 85 times before he croaks before the end of the year. A judge on Wednesday in Pittsburgh ordered a school district to readmit a 14-year-old student expelled for writing violent, profane rap lyrics, finding that his songs did not amount to true threats against the school and so were protected by the First Amendment. The Riverside Beaver County School District kicked out Anthony Latour because officials believed his lyrics constituted threats to shoot up the school and another student. The ACLU representing Latour claimed his songs were battle rap, a music genre in which two people try to outrhyme each other, often using violent put-downs. Battle rap. You ever hear that? Yeah, you know, you spit. What? Battle rap, yeah, they uh, they rap off. You asked, I heard that Mo was going to be one of those, but it was a rape-off. Is what I heard. Do, 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 do. U.S. District Judge Sorry. Donetta Ambrose overturned his expulsion issued a preliminary injunction against ordering the district to admit Latour to the ninth grade when classes resume August 31. That's less than a week. That's a week from yesterday. In one song, Latour wrote, So watch what you say about me. I'm everywhere, son. And the word of mouth is that I'm carrying guns. Now that I'm coming for you, what the F are you going to do? Come double with the pump tons of slugs that'll punish you. How do you like that? <laughs> School officials learned of Latour's writings in March and contacted the police, who charged him with terrorist threats, terroristic threats and harassment. Latour was expelled in May. The charges are pending. Terroristic threats and harassment. How do you like that? Uh-huh. He's just rapping it, baby. The judge said the school's argument that the music was threatening was weakened because school officials did not take immediate steps to investigate the music, such as searching Latour's locker or contacting his parents. Furthermore, Ambrose said school officials didn't present any evidence that the songs disrupted the school. The school district and Latour's family did not have any comment. How do you like that? He's just rapping it, man. Mm-hmm. He's doing a little, what kind of rap is it? Battle, battle rap. rapping. It's not a bunch of crap. It's just a bunch of battle rap. That's what it is. Just run it down. Take them all out. 
Now, this is a story that obviously nobody cares about because we had it on our website. I think it was the least read. Or no, actually, it was about the states. I don't think I even saved that story because nobody cared about it, about the fattest states. Did you know that Houston is the fattest uh, city in no, the country? No, I did not. And that Texas has got like four of the uh, worst ten fattest uh, cities. That's because they meet all them barbecue down there, you know, and all that Texas beef or whatever they're doing. And they're just sitting around on their fat ass. Kind of like your president is doing, sitting around on his fat ass in Texas and Idaho while uh, Rome is burning, you know, and uh, in the Middle East, too. Obesity rates rose last year in every state. We're getting fatter and fatter. I lost two pounds, by the way. Good. 193. It's not good, but I, I was starting to get a little on the precipice of uh, being over my plane. Yeah. Right? No, and I, I'm not joking about that. I if, I, if I get, like, over 195, I can't uh, function as a quasi-human being. I can't uh, even do this show. Like, uh, I, I can't even just... It's a, it's a function of the diabetes thing. But now I'm like, uh, you see, you notice the difference? I sound like almost like myself today. Almost. Not quite as... Huh? Almost. You're almost Not there. a day over 90. Hey, by the way, it's QAM. We're old. Obesity rates rose last year in every state, but over got according to an advocacy group, advocacy group that called on the government and the private sector to get more involved in America's battle with expanding waistlines. The advocacy group... Oh, by the way, I wonder how Keith Trudeau, Kevin Trudeau is doing. Don't buy that book, please. I sure hope a lot of people read that story. Please don't buy that book. Don't waste your thirty dollars. About thirty, man. Oh my God, the the number of things you you could like get a half a tank of gas for thirty bucks. <laughs> the advocacy, ad, what do you say? The group Trust for Americans Health said data from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention show that the percentage of obese adults for 2002 to four stood at 22. Point, now it's over 25 percent. You ready for that? I'm ready. Obese, not just fat. I mean, fat's like 60 uh, percent, but o obese. Obese. The state exhibiting the largest increase in obesity was Alabama. Maybe they took the banjo off their knee. There, the rate increased a point and a half to 27.7%. Oregon's rate held steady at 21. The report said the states with the highest percentage of obese adults are Mississippi, Alabama, West Virginia, Louisiana, and, and Tennessee. Uh, the states with the lowest percentage of obese adults are Colorado. Huh? Is, yeah. it, is it that outdoorsy kind of thing there, or is it that they're all spend all their energy it's, running around shooting them faggots? Well, nice to walk outside. And Massachusetts? Oh, yeah, Massachusetts, man. They're, like, real active there. They're running up and down uh, Beacon Street. Rhode Island, Connecticut, Vermont, and Montana. Hawaii was not included in the report. Of course, if they did Hawaii, they'd have to include all those sumo kind of guys. A lot of the Hawaiians are like that. Well, what are they? Fat. Fat. But you know what I'm saying? Right. It's another fact, one of those... When they, when they do that... Pig roast, where they put the pig yeah. on the spit. Sometimes they make a mistake. It's another one of those things like the Eskimos. You know, as long as they kept to the native diet, it didn't get so crazy. Yeah. And then we poisoned them with our uh, refined everything. Well, I tell you, they got some really great, that Polynesian food. I don't know if oh, you like yeah. that, but boy, they got some good food in Hawaii. All over oh, it. Yeah. man. Mm. Ham. An official with the Trust America's uh, Health said the U.S. is stuck in a debate limbo about how the government should confront obesity. First of all, how about if they went after all the food manufacturers that are putting all this crap to addicted, to make you addicted to their food and all the uh, crap in there that's making you fat? How about that, huh? But that's bad for business, so they're not going to do that. If you're smoking those cancer sticks, then right away, oh, it's bad, and it's going to kill you, and we're going to sue all, you know, all these multi-billion dollar lawsuits. I just don't understand why they're not like, oh, there's that Chad Everett again. This would be a huge storm hitting Florida. It is not a huge storm. It is going to be a, probably a Category 1 as it makes landfall. It is still traveling off to the west at about 7 or 8 miles per hour. Now you do the math. Here's the northern seven, part eight, of six. the eye wall, yeah. the most dangerous part of any storm, especially when this convection here rotates up and around and it's on this side. And as this storm moves toward Boca, sorry, I told you, miles Boca, away. baby, only 36 miles east of Boca. Batten down away. the hatches in the muskrat. Bring them in. Do, 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 do. The storm is still developing. Right now, officially... It's 60 miles per hour. There may be some higher gusts, especially in this squall right here, yeah. which will rotate and then we move on squall off toward Boca. Right between the line between Brevard County, Broward County, and into Palm Beach County. That's where the strongest part of this storm is going to hit. Probably 75, maybe 80 miles per hour when it makes landfall. And there you go, Boca. See, and like I told you, it's not moving south. In spite of what this bubblehead on CNN said, has been saying all morning long, it is not going to the south. It's going west. If anything, it may go a little tiny. But see what I'm saying? Yeah, right no, straight no, no, into Boca, no, no, right no, no, into no, no, Moe's no, no, no. house. This is Neil oh Rogers. This is 562 a.m. Hey, Lightning, and I like scrubbing my smelly gorilla ass with soap made from jewels and listening to the near Roche Amunista Hour. Hey, guys! Now, see here. I ain't never said no. Yeah, I'm just very annoyed. About me saying no. I 
Effective tribute there for our good close personal wow. friend. You don't want to know why I did that, don't you? Why did you do that? Because uh, I think Boca may be obliterated. Do, 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 do. And we're going oh. like, to uh, have, have to have a tribute for uh, the Moleman because that's uh, his headquarters. That's where he hangs it out. That's I where he's that. probably playing golf right now. Don't get wet out there in a course, Mo. Don't get pneumonia out there like William Henry Harrison. And I have some shocking news for all you. Uh, now, are you uh, tracking this or not? Are you paying no attention to I'm, you? I'm backtracking it. 
No, no, seriously. No, I'm not paying any attention. Well, why not? Whatever. So, in other words, you're not on my uh, thing here on my National Weather Service radar? No, I'm on CNN. Oh, forget about them. Bunch of goyim. The, uh, it looks to me, because now the eye has opened up. It's kind of like they went to, took the storm to the dentist, and he said open wide, and the eye is not only uh, visible again, which it had kind of like vanished, but it's now you can see the uh, motion of the, the, is northwest again. Mm-hmm. Which you'll notice they were just talking about Boca as opposed to Fort Lauderdale. Because now you can see very definitely the whole system is like taking a little jog, you know, like on yeah. Jog Road. A little jog to the northwest. So that big eye is headed right for uh, <laughs> Moe's house. Because the Lord is P.O.'d, baby. The Lord is pissed off about that muskrat. Now, you uh, for, uh, neglected to mention the death of somebody very important that nobody ever heard of. Who? I think it's a racial thing with you. Brock Peters. Who? The way Brock Peters recalled it, the competition for To Kill a Mockingbird came down him and James Earl Jones. You know James Earl Jones? This is yes, CNN. You know him? Right. Peters won out. I never actually knew who made the decision he remembered, but to whoever it was, I'm grateful. Peters, the character actor who made his mark as and lent his booming voice to the doomed Tom Robinson in the 1962 film version of Mockingbird, died Tuesday at his L.A. home following an eight-month battle with pancreatic cancer. He was 78. So you didn't even mention it? No, I didn't. We spent two weeks that I called two weeks of tears, my veil of tears, Peter said of the movie, shoot before an audience in Kansas in 2000, uh, per the site to uh, kill a mockingbird. What, what, oh, I see, according to the site to kill a mockingbird in Harper Lee. Huh? Tears didn't necessarily come easy to Peter as the actor, nor did they come easy to his stoic character. They did, however, apply to Tom Robinson's plight, a wrongly accused black man faced with an all-white jury in the 1930s South, kind of like O.J. in reverse. Acclaimed by the American Film Institute as one of the 100 greatest U.S. films of the last century, Mockingbird won three Oscars, including one for star Gregory Schmeck, who died in 2003, and it was Peters who read the eulogy at Peck's funeral. In art there is compassion, and compassion there is humanity, and in humanity there is generosity and love, Peters said. Gregory Peck gave us these attributes in full measure. Isn't that touching? I'm touching it now. Over the years, Peters was a regular on the Mockingbird circuit, uh, appearing on stage with Mary Badham, who played Scott, or is that Badham? Kind of like Cindy Sheehan? who played young Scout in the movie and most recently at a 2005 L.A. tribute to Harper Lee, upon whose novel the largely faithful film was based. Well, that's a shame. <coughs> he was a good actor, and now he's dead. See, I told you that dying thing is going around. Sure. A lot of people going... I'm dying over here. Like that, including Jason Robards. You know, i got to watch that again, maybe this weekend. Do it. Magnolia. I think if you watched it again, especially when the frog started falling, I think you might like it a little bit better. I got, I got to, I got to rewatch that scene very carefully about the TV game show host when, right. when he fires off that shot and see if he really blew out the TV. I, I, I or his still brains or my... both or whatever. What? If he blew out the TV or his brains or both. I think both. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to watch of mice and men. Oh, I didn't watch that. You did I? No, you haven't. Did I get it? I got it. You got it. You just haven't watched it yet. Oh, I haven't watched that. Oh, maybe one of these days when I'm really, really bored. Oh, I don't know. Is it really good? Would I enjoy it? It's it's just fine. It's a good story. It's a good story. Corny. No. Who's in it? Uh, the in this version, it's Gary Sinise and John Malkovich. Yeah. And it's good. Hmm. Okay, I got it. It's sitting right in the other room. I'll get around to it. Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's take a few calls because hour and uh, twenty uh, minutes. We're out of here. That's bad. I feel like almost guilty today. Almost. In fact, I'm gonna maybe I'll watch of my Simon before I watch my next Corey Haim movie. <laughs> WQAM. Hello. QAM. Hey Neil, how you doing? Pretty good. Good. Listen, um, as you so delicately put it, that fat ass Gilgo's got to be on that pole because he uh, his religious beliefs. Affect me directly, man, in my kid's school and stuff. So I want to get him in the bowl. Don't forget, choose life, man. And what CNN needs to ask our so-called president is that I know the president has a lot of power, you know, but when, when did he change uh, the second commandment from thou shalt not kill to thou shalt ki kill anybody that doesn't believe what I believe? They kill only the ragheads. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, he's, yeah. he's preaching religion so much, but, you know, what about love thy enemy, you know? Choose life, yeah. baby. Choose you got life. it, buddy. Okay. Bunch of hypocrites. Says the, uh, just like Pat Robertson. There, there's, and, and you notice the way he gets a free pass from the media. I really scoured to try to find some really scathing editorials and commentary. Yeah, and, you know, there were luck. a couple articles I put on the website, but there just wasn't a lot. Here's a guy who comes on the air on his own TV channel there and his uh, 700 Club, 
and advocates the assassination of a duly elected leader of another country where we already have these very grotesque relations with and a very delicate oil situation, and opens up a mouth and says, uh, yeah, let's kill him. Let's uh, not wait anymore. Let's get it over with and assassinate him now. And then goes on and lies about it in a half-baked yeah. lukewarm apology. To avert a war, as if, like, war right. is looming. That's like that. right. we got to save that $200 billion, but, uh, you know, lives, uh, that's not important. He, he didn't mention the, the 1,874 dead kids in Iraq. He didn't talk about that. He's talking about the money. And, of course, cause that, that, he's a money-grabbing whore and crook is what he is. If you, wanna, if, you, if you Google Pat Robertson crook, just put his name and the word crook next to it, then you'll find out all about him and his exploits in Africa and Zaire and in Liberia, all this with the diamond mines and the phony Operation Rescue and all this aid they were saying. And the pilots said they weren't bringing any aid at all. All they were doing was, like, bringing materials over there so they could do their diamond mining. And by the way, the good news is that all uh, went went to pot, so to speak. All good. Went to hell on a hand casket. Miserable, crooked, drooling. And to think that he ran for president. I think it's mighty appropriate, uh, given what's going on in your country today. Your country. 1213 is Father Cindy. Same pain. And we do what we have to do to get through our pain. And we hope they respect us for that. And we respect them in any way they have to do to get through their pain. 1213 at 560 WQM. When was the last time you really indulged yourself? Weeks ago, months ago, even longer? Dollar Mattress and Serta want you to indulge yourself every single night with Serta's perfect night mattress line. Right now, when you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you can save up to 900 bucks off the Dollar Mattress factory direct prices. The perfect night features Serta's highest coil counts, finest quilting, and memory foam for the ultimate in comfort. This sort of sale is for a limited time. You're going to save on all sizes and comfort levels while supplies last. Call 1-800-MATTRESS and get delivery within any two-hour window that you choose, and they show up on time. If it's convenient for you, like 10 to noon, 1 to 3, 2 to 4, whatever, 145 to 345. And chances are they have the mattress you want in a size and comfort level in stock right now, ready for same-day delivery. Dollar Mattress is ranked number one in customer satisfaction. I've been using them for years now. And George and Mo and Miguel and even Fat Boy. Are a few of the people around here satisfied customers? And I guarantee you, you call these folks and you will be too. Don't put it off another minute. Call 1 800 Mattress or log on to that website, mattress.com. Call today. Be sleeping and swimming like a baby as soon as tonight. Call 1 800 M A T T R E S. Leave off that last S because it stands for savings. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Now, there's a marvelous place I know where all the wealthy people go. It's where royalty play polo, and that's what I like about Noka. A town where egos are never small. A town where they say, how tall? And every corner has a ball. And that's what I like about Noka. <laughs> Ten grand on golf course fees. Spend the day in Jewish bakeries. You should taste these delicacies. And that's what I like about Noka. But please excuse our attitudes and our BMWs. We find pleasure in being rude. And that's what I like about Noka. <laughs> Watches. White shoes make us so obnoxious. If you're clean, we'll let you touch us. And that's what I like about Noka. We really don't care what you think. You see, our doo-doo doesn't stink. There's no coffee, only mocha. And that's what I like about Noka. <laughs> Bye-bye, Boca. Nice knowing you. Do, 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 do. Well, you know something, a lot of old Jews there. Uh, I guess going to have to relocate back to Miami Beach. You know, if there's Jew Jews relocating in Gaza, right? Right. Look, they already wear those high-water shorts anyway, those Bermuda shorts. And, of course, those rain catcher hats mm -hmm. that are really great on the golf course. Police tried to rouse an 87-year-old woman snoozing on a recliner at a discount store on the weekend, found $60,000 in cash in her purse while looking for her ID. This is in Janesville, Wisconsin. Employees at the Big Lots store said the woman had been sleeping there for hours when police arrived. Police couldn't manage to wake her in. An officer who rummaged through her purse found 600 bill stacks of $100 bills. Oh, maybe she was going to Woodbine. Inside a second bag secured with a safety pin. A sergeant was dispatched to the scene. Oh, yeah, 
Speaking of that, there was a couple that won the lottery here. Uh, the lotto about two weeks ago, the six forty nine, seven and a half million dollars. Ninety years old. They both Whoa. live in a nursing home. Well, good for them. Bastards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> seven and a half million, and the guy's going to go out and buy a Lincoln Continental. And of course, if they were in South Florida, he'd be driving it around. I'm sure. Hey, my mother was driving. She was ninety. Mm -hmm. Found out yesterday, I heard a story about how she was once driving on the wrong side of the road on Sterling Road, but yeah. nevertheless. <laughs> hey, listen, it's confusing, you know? Sure. A sergeant was dispatched to the scene to verify the money count, and the cash later was also counted by Lieutenant Keith Lover. Oh, and you know something? This reminds me, I have i got to tell you this story. It's not all that significant, but it has to do with finding money. A few days ago, I go over to my uh, little neighborhood convenience store to buy a newspaper, soda, whatever. Ice cream. Whatever, whatever. And I come back. It was like, I don't know, maybe 8 o'clock at night. And uh, in front of my building, I see on the ground, I mean, you can't miss it because the Canadian currency is very colorful, especially that pink $50 bill. Yeah, I bet you like it. And I see, like, uh, what appeared to be, like, three bills, like, uh, kind of, like, wadded together sitting on the ground. Now, there's this young couple oh, a few paces behind me coming into the building. And they, unfortunately, well, I mean, whatever, they spotted it, too. And the guy says, what's that? And just mm. as slick as oil on a barge, man, I just reach right down as, without breaking my ah. stride Yoink. and pick that, the three bills up. Very good. Another kind of, I can, I can see, even though I don't have eyes in the back of my head, I can feel it, that they're like lying and like, oh, what is he going to do? There's a 50, a 20, and a 10. There's 80 bucks. Now, I got about, oh, 30 seconds. About 30, man. A few seconds as I'm walking in, I can always go to the concierge and say, oh, I just found this out there. If anybody says they lost 80 bucks. But, of course, he'd probably stick it in his pocket when nobody's looking, right? Right, wouldn't you? Or, I did. Okay. Or, <laughs> no, anybody could say, uh, they could put a sign up there and say, oh, if anybody lost $80, well, how the hell would you know you lost $80 in the first place, right? Right. Because it looked to me like somebody, you know, maybe had a bunch of bills in their pocket and they started pulling some money and they just dropped that little wad of cash on the ground, 80 bucks. Now, there are going to be people out there, and I didn't have to tell this on the air, say, oh, my God, look how dishonest you are, all the money you're making, uh, $80, I can lose that in about five seconds, it would buy. But the fact of the matter is, uh, I found it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Well, what, what's the point? So I stuffed it in my pocket, and I came up the stairs, and I like, had a little smirkle on my face. Why, what difference does it make, right? right. Finders, keepers. Now, that's right. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers, yada, yada, ya mama. That's right. My 80 bucks didn't change my life, and hopefully it's not going to anybody who can afford to live in this building. It's not going to change their life either. 80 bucks, Canadian, huh? Chicken feed. Chicken that was feed. just one of those things. It reminds me that that time, which was like an act of God. Damn, God. When I first came to South Florida, I lived over on Miami Beach very briefly before I couldn't, I just couldn't stand it. All those far bison. And uh, it was on a Sunday. Never forget this. What the hell was the name of that drugstore? It was on Alton Road. It was a drugstore that had like a fountain, you know, a counter with like good mm -hmm. cheeseburgers and uh, banana splits. And, oh, what the hell was the name of that place? I'm sure it's not there no more. Somebody will know. At any rate, so I take my, my very first credit card. It's 1976 because I had no cash in my pocket. Mm -hmm. I had cash in a bank. And I go to the uh, and the dim and the flagship bank on Wash was it Washington Avenue or Alton Road whatever if it was the flagship they're no longer in business, and I go to take money out and then come to find out that the uh, the ATM was broken which back in those days they were kind of on the primitive side anyway and they were like all over the place and it was out of service and I couldn't get no cash so I had like I don't know made like two bucks in my pocket, so I'm walking back to my little apartment. Where the Orthodox Jews who lived upstairs used to like uh, hockey shining till three in the morning. Ba -ba -ba yeah, yeah, yeah. Make so much noise you couldn't sleep. And I'm, I'm walking back there and I'm on the side street right where this restaurant uh, drugstore was. And there by the curb is $20. Two $10 bills. How about Just, that? I'm on the street. Two $10 bills somebody had dropped. Just for you. Just for me. You see, so I'm assuming that that 80 bucks I found the other day might like, uh, who knows? Maybe I should take the 80 bucks and go buy lotto tickets on Saturday. Do it. Huh? No, I already did. I spent 100 bucks and got 25 back. And by the way, I'd like to mention some jackass won $14.5 million in the 649 lotto here on uh, Saturday. I'm not too happy about it. It wasn't, it wasn't this jackass. Somebody won the $35 million here. No. Yeah, because I, I drive by it every day and it's back to three. Oh, no. Yeah, this was 14 and a half and I said it was back to four. And out of, I spent 400 bucks on lotto tickets. You know what? I got back 60 Not Not a good investment, right? Right. See, one thing when you're playing the lottery, I just, you know... Uh, that time that I just missed the 15 million by one digit, remember that a few months ago? Mm -hmm. I spent 80 bucks and I got back 1600. In fact, I got 1600 for the five out of six. Plus, I got uh, had some other ones on there, so I got back about 1700 bucks for 80. So just the idea that because there's millions of combinations, so the idea that you're going to go out there and spend oh, you know, hundreds and hundreds, it doesn't help. 
You might get a few, uh, you know, a few extra six dollars or for whatever they pay. That's about it. Japan's champion speed eater devoured a hundred roast pork buns in 12 minutes in Hong Kong in the final round of an eating contest this past weekend. Takuru Kobayashi. Yeah, he's famous. 27 taught through the Chinese steamed buns to easily beat five their other local contestants, pocketing a cash prize of 20,000 Hong Kong dollars. That's 2,574 bucks U.S. First front runner-up, Johnny Wu, 34, finished 47 buns. This guy did 100, 100 roast pork buns. Kobayashi, who weighs just 144 pounds, said the palm-sized buns pose more of a challenge than the 83 vegetarian dumplings he downed in eight minutes on Saturday. What a pig. The Japanese speed eater. Oh, why don't they have that at the Olympics now that everybody's so fat? How about speed eating? That's right. Uh, they do have uh, they have eating contests on ESPN. It's a national. Oh, I know uh, that. Which is a hell of a lot more entertaining than watching people play cards. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese speed eater is the five-time international hot dog eating champion and holds the world record after wolfing down 53 and a half weenies in just 12 minutes. This is Neil Rogers. This is 560 QAM. Spread them and say cheese. From the producers of Dancing with the Stars and Brat Camp comes the new reality series that doesn't feel new at all. It's Dancing with the Brats. I don't want to dance. You can't make me dance. Watch the biggest brats team up with the biggest stars like William Shatner. I love to dance. I love brats. What could be better? I hate you. I hope you die. Oh. Must be a Leonard Nimoy thing. Anna Nicole Smith. I ain't dancing with nobody who ain't really old and really rich. Sing it some fear. I'm trying to dance away. And Mike Tyson. Excuse me, Mr. Producer Man. I forgot. Am, am, am I a star or a brat? It's the show that kicks up its heels and throws a tantrum. Dancing with the Brats, tonight on ABC. 12.32 at 5.60 WQM. See, the uh, outer bands already are uh, <coughs> in Dayton Broward. Have you seen that? You looking uh, out the window? No. If you had one? Oh, look at that. The bands. Yeah. The boys in the bands. Band on the run. Just yell out. You fairy. Tropical storms uh, Katrina's outer squalls are splashing through a region largely spared by last year's historic and deadly quartet of Florida's hurricanes, says the unctuous Miami Herald. Worse weather will arrive this afternoon. See what I've been telling you folks this afternoon. Not tonight, not a week from circus, this afternoon. Haven't I been saying that right from the, the uh, crossover with Geldy? Ah! That, yeah. Now, that was great, that little doy he blurted out this morning. That was, that was a significant moment in the history of broadcasting. Doy. Have you got it? Doy. 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 <laughs> oh. Ah, I'll link it uh, together later. Oh, yeah. I want a whole bunch of those just strung together. In fact, well, maybe we'll just string Geldy up. Do it. Do it. Worst weather will arrive this afternoon, and the current forecast calls for minimal hurricane force winds of 75 miles an hour to sweep much of tonight. Let's see. At 11 this morning, the center of the storm was only, well, this is old, you know, the crap. That's what happens when you got a newspaper with a crappy website. That's the Herald. Katrina is fairly large and very wet and moving very slowly, and Dayton Palm Beach counties are also feeling it. They're feeling it. They're feeling the change. With many areas of South Florida ill-suited to absorb the foot or more of rain that Katrina threatens to deliver, local flooding was feared, and emergency manglers urged residents to avoid standing water, especially after the storm passes. If there's like a power line hanging down to the a pool of water, it's probably not a good idea to like go in there and investigate. The potential major rain event has begun, Ed Rappaport, Deputy Director of the National Hurricane Center, said. There's still a chance for hurricane condition to be expected anywhere from Palm Beach to Dade County. At this point, people should do whatever emergency managers advise them to do. Those emergency managers urge South Floridians to stay home today, saying the driving will become increasingly hazardous as the day progresses. In other words, this afternoon. Not four weeks from Shibuya's, this afternoon. But that Geldy owes me, I told him. Go home and take care of that wife and those bratty little kids. If you're going to drive in Broward this afternoon, I have one word for you, said the obnoxious possum, Broward Sheriff Ken Jenny. One word for you, don't. Schools are closed at in Dade Broward counties. People live east of the Intracoastal in Broward were advised to begin evacuating at 8 o'clock this morning, and Red Cross shelters open in Broward at 2. Well, why are they going to need Red Cross shelters in Broward? What, what is that? You know, for the trailer. Don't you think people. there's a little bit of over uh, hysteria going on here as usual? No. Okay, in Palm Beach County, limited evacuation orders were issued, and some shelters will open at 1, not less than a half an hour. And the uh, 1 o'clock uh, advisory is coming any minute now, because it always comes about 1240. But despite the guidance from experts, some businesses and schools remain open. Florida Atlantic University plan to keep students in class till 4 this afternoon in Broward and Palm Beach counties, but belatedly told them to leave by 1 o'clock. Get out before it's too late. Forecasters said the center of the slow-moving rain-intensive system could reach land, possibly in... Broward! 
and possibly as a hurricane around 8 o'clock tonight. But Katrina's core was surrounded by... Now, you see, if it's, it was 35 miles east of Boca in the last blurb we saw about a half an hour ago, and it's going like even six miles an hour, mm-hmm. my math tells me that's like maybe by six, maybe even a little bit sooner. But Katrina's core was surrounded by multiple bands. And as a matter of fact, if you look at it, you'll notice that the uh, the brilliant yellows and a little a bit of reds that were in there, they are dissipating. That doesn't mean it's not going to like uh, come back again. But right now, it's mostly like greens, if you were looking at it, which you're not. I'm not. Oh, I am now. Why? Why not? But Katrina's core, uh, regardless of the precise out of landfall, forecasters warned the entire region to prepare for gusty wind and a severe soaking. You're going to be soaking it. In fact, maybe Madge will come back to announce you're soaking in it. Remember Madge? Yeah, she died. The palm olive bitch. She's dead. Though Katrina was not expected to become an especially intense hurricane and time was running out, experts advised people who have storm shutters to put them up, especially if they live in Broward, Palm Beach, or Northern Dade, and only relatively easy accordion-style shutters. Residents should complete their preparations early today as possible, Tony Carper, Broward's emergency management director, said this morning. Weather conditions will deteriorate throughout the day. It's going to be a heavy rain event. You're going to be saying, I'm dying over here. Meanwhile, Katrina was developing the classic spiral shape of trouble today. A picture all too familiar to Floridians after last year's for her. Yada, 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 about a BB. Uh, let's see. Where's the thing about where it's going to go? That's all anybody cares about. After it leaves South Florida on Friday, Katrina is likely to remain a problem for the state. Forecast is expected to enter the Gulf of Mexico, regain strength, make a sharp right turn, and slam into the Florida panhandle again as a hurricane late Sunday, early Monday. You see, this is God's punishment for the fat-ass governor and legislature for not getting those uh, slot machines going. You know, sometimes, you know, God's got bad aim and he has to work in a circuitous way. He could have gone, you know, uh, underneath like slam Cuba again. But then that would be another slap at Hugo Chavez, who just got called for assassination by Pat Robertson, so he figured he'd spare him this time and come through South Florida, right through Moe's house, zip across, probably get to Beasley's over there on the West Coast, and then zip right up there to Tallahassee in Punta Gorda. And it's not Punta Gorda, by the way. It's Punta Gorda for you idiots on the networks who keep mispronouncing it over and over. You have to ask the people who live there. They say Punta Gorda, not Punta Gorda, okay? Punta sounds better. I don't want to say Punta because, uh, you know, our crowd out there, a bunch of perverts. Don't say that again. In Punta, Punta Gorda, flattened last year by Hurricane <laughs> Charlie, some residents already began preparing. Shutters went up and boats came out of the water as people who were hard hit just a year ago rushed to prepare for more wind and water. They're like, uh, you know, better be safe than sorry is what they're saying over there. Now let's take a look at that poll. we got to hurry because we got that ball game at 1.30. That's right. Move pre-game back. show. And that's uh, really a shame. Our goal is 500 votes on the poll by 1.30 by game time. We have 467. Our goal is 470. Which religious nut do you hate the most? George W. Bush? I mean, nobody's going to touch him, and who would want to? 201. Louis Farrakhan, 53. Jerry Falwell, 52. Pat Robertson is kind of slid into behind, 43. Jesse Jackson, 31. The Pope, 17. You see that? They have to treat the Pope with respect. I voted for the Pope just to be different. I, I did. So that's two of those 17 is you and me, the, the two honest people. We know how dangerous he is and how much Evil. pain and suffering he and his predecessors have caused. Just look at those eyes. Disease. Unwar- unwanted babies. Oh, thank goodness, by the way, in the Iraqi Constitution, they're saying that the uh, girl, that the women, by age nine, they uh, can be married, age nine in Iraq. Whether they right, what or not. And, of course, they uh, can't go outside without their uh, husbands. And burqas. Right. James Dobson, 16. Al Sharpton, 15. Jimmy Swagger, 13. None of them. I'm a religious nut, seven. We have seven religious nuts out there. Hey, let's take them out. D. James Kennedy, 7, Benny Hinn, 6, Jeb Bush, 4, for your fat-ass Governor John Ascroft, 2, and Billy Graham doesn't have any because it's just, you know, he's a doddering old fool. He's about 190 years old, and, like, uh, they feel sorry for him, even though, of course, he's a peddler of bullcrap, as they all are. Don't forget, after the Marlins ball game, Marlins at Milwaukee, that, that's a big game, I have a feeling. We got Curtis Stevenson at about 5 o'clock thereabouts, Hurricane Hotline and the Beast tonight, and the Eddie K Show at 10 o'clock tonight. Another old Jew. This is Neil Rogers. Another ball old Jew. This is 560 QA. Alonzo, you're so big. With everything going wrong, he did what any of us would do. He went on vacation. President Bush went on a month long vacation. Damn the consequences. It is my style. It is hard work. It is hard work. It's hard work. My job is to do my job, you know. I'm going to do it the way I think is necessary. I'm going to set a vision. I will lead, and we'll just let the chips fall where they may. And best of all, I decide to quit. Dick Cheney can be president. It's hard work. Everybody knows it's hard work. It's, uh, and it's hard work. Uh, I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully.
Now get back to work. Thank you. <laughs> party, party. <laughs> Abu Ghraib. They're having a big party there. In fact, all those uh, prisoners at Guantanamo at Gitmo, man, I'm sure they're enjoying that tropical paradise. 1246, 14 to 1, a Marlin pregame show at 1.30. Here's the 1 o'clock advisory on Tropical Storm Katrina, and intermediate advisory number 8A. Why do they have, like, a, a, a letter after it, number 8A? I don't know. I don't either. But it says, Katrina continues to strengthen as it moves slowly westward across the Florida Straits towards southeast Florida. Oh, my God. A hurricane warning remains in effect for the southeast Florida coast from Vero Beach southward to Florida City, including Lake Okeechobee. Uh, a tropical storm warning remains in effect for Grand Bahama Island, Bimini, and the Berry Islands in the northwest Bahamas. The warning has been discontinued for the remainder of the northwest Bahamas. A tropical storm watch remains in effect for the east-central Florida coast from north of Vero Beach northward to Titusville, including all of Merritt Island, and for the middle and upper Florida Keys from the west end, the ass end of the Seven Mile Bridge northward to south of Florida City. A tropical storm watch is also in effect for the Florida west coast from Florida City to Englewood, including Florida Bay. For, uh, let's see, at 1 o'clock... Reports from NOAA Doppler radar and a NOAA reconnaissance aircraft indicate the center of Tropical Storm Katrina was located near latitude 26.2 north and longitude 79.5 west or about 40 miles east-northeast of Fort Lauderdale and about 40 miles east-southeast of Boca. Boca. Doi, 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 doi. Katrina's moving toward the west near six miles an hour. I, you know, I just want to interject. It looks to me like a, a little jog to the northwest. I could be wrong about that, but I don't think so. But they say, and I, who the hell am I, right, to doubt them? I'm right. looking at it right now. It's a little, at any rate. Moving toward the west near six miles an hour, this general motion is expected to continue with a slight decrease in forward speed during the next 24 hours. On this track, the center should be nearer over the southeast Florida coast later tonight or early Friday morning. How, how is that possible? Uh, early Friday morning. Or maybe, maybe they mean like one or two in the morning. Oh. They're wrong. Reports from a NOAA reconnaissance aircraft indicate maximum sustained winds have increased to near 65 miles an hour with higher gusts. Additional strengthening is expected today and tonight, and Katrina could become a Category 1 hurricane before the center reaches the southeastern coast of Florida. And I'm looking at those bands. Oh, look at that. Right in the smack in the, like, on the alley. There's a big yellow blob. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Our cable. Maybe it's Josh Friedman. Our cable's out. Our, your cable is out? Mine's yeah. on fine. And as a matter of fact, I'm glad you mentioned that. I want to go back to uh, the Emmis. I want to get the Emmis on the storm from Emmis NBC. Storm surge flooding. Let's see. The minimum central pressure was 990 millibars. Storm surge flooding of 2 to 4 feet above normal tide levels, along with large and dangerous battering waves, can be expected near and to the north of where the center makes landfall in Florida. Near and to the north. Sounds like do, 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 do. storm surge flooding at 2 to 4 feet above normal tide levels, along with large and dangerous battering waves, can also be expected in areas of, of onshore winds in the Bahamas, although we don't really care about them. Due to its slow forward speed, as the Japanese say about the Bahamians, due to its slow forward speed, Katrina is expected to produce a significant heavy rainfall event over South Florida and the central and northwest Bahamas, Mon. Total accumulations of 6 to 10 inches of rainfall with isolated maximum amounts of 15 inches are possible. Isolated tornadoes will also be possible over southern Florida and the Florida Keys. The 1 o'clock position again, 26.2 north, 79.5 west, movement near 6 miles an hour, and toward the west, they're saying. Maximum sustained wind 65. Intermediate advisory coming up at 3, followed by complete advisory at 5. And of course, I'm sure we'll be interrupting the Marlin game no. for that 3 o'clock no. intermediate advisory here on your news intensive, no. keeping you informed community involved state no. WQA. No. And I want to especially thank our news department. No. Huh? <laughs> Absolutely. For keeping us in touch. I'm going to tell you something. If I didn't have this Internet here, if I didn't have my pewter sitting here, we wouldn't have a clue what's going on. I mean, you've got no window there, so you have no idea. It could be like raining uh, golf balls out there. It could be, it could be raining like uh, watermelons. Rain flaming hailstones. Right. And you would have no idea. Except you'd probably hear it on the roof and we'd be off the air. Oh, man, wouldn't that be something if we went off the air? Should have started uh, doing the Indian rain dance for that about an hour and a half ago. So your cable's out? Here, yeah. Oh, here. geez, that's bad. Mine's on. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Kevin. Okay. She's an idiot. Isn't that that right-wing bitch that's, uh, I can't keep track of who these people are. They got that uh, screamer on there, Ronnie Reagan Jr. Oh, my God. Hey, Ronnie, put a toe on the ground. You fairy. You silly goose. The ballet dancer. Isn't that ironic how all these are right-wingers, uh, Phyllis Shoefly and Tom DeLay and Alan Keyes and the Reagans. Uh, just amazing. All the right-wingers are, uh, and Dick Cheney with his bulldog daughter. She's even more butch than, uh, what's her name on Passions that just came out yesterday, or is it today? Whenever she's coming out. What's her name? What is her name? I don't know. Whitney's sister. Uh, look at that thing. It's just, I don't know, the eye is like, uh, it's very strange, but there's not, not like a lot of bright yellows in that thing. And I'm sure you're looking at it right now, aren't you? 
Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> it's all black. Uh, your president, who's a liar, President Bush said yesterday that terrorists had converted. See, this is the thing that the media did. I, I don't get it. It's enough to drive you up the wall if you really started caring about it too much. The, the, the Pat Robertson thing and all these lies and Cheney talking about the insurgency, that, that was weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Remember that? Yep. Oh, it's all fizzling out. They're just about done. And beep, 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 and Ralph started lying right. through his teeth. And they asked him about Pat Tillman and about that big cover-up the other day. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, Hermann Goering Jr. President Bush said yesterday that terrorists had converged on Iraq and pulling U.S. troops out would only embolden them as he sought to counter increased anti-war sentiment in the U.S. The terrorists weren't there before the Iraq attack, before the illegal invasion based on a pack of lies on the WMDs and regime change and all this other crap. The stakes in Iraq couldn't be higher, the Bushmeister said. Abu Ghraib. The brutal violence in Iraq today is a clear sign of the terrorist determination to stop democracy from taking root in the Middle East, he said. Well, when's democracy going to take place in Pakistan and in Saudi Arabia and in Egypt and all these and in Syria, huh? Don't forget the United States. And, well, we used to have it. I can remember it. Not that long ago. It's been uprooted. Until they stole that election in 2000. And we had, see, this was a bloodless coup. Well, it was bloodless till the Iraq attack. And now we got a lot of blood all over everybody's hands. But it was a bloodless coup as uh, they, they just stole the election and took over control of the government. And now they're appointing judges and Supreme Court judges, and they're, like, uh, changing the laws and taking away your rights. And we can't say crap on here anymore. And we got that Penny Nance in your pants at the FCC. And you ain't seen nothing yet, baby. The rumor I'm hearing is that she's digging back through every kind of stuff that's ever, ever been said, even if somebody, like, farted on the air. I'm not talking about a fart sound, but, like, for real. We're going to find you $80 million. <clears throat> See, I'm getting choked up about it. I'm gagging on it. Panama City, a man who once shouted cuckoo and then dropped his pants to moon a jury. Remember that story? Nope. Has been convicted of attacking his girlfriend with a box cutter. Well, it's a good thing he's not on my flight. <laughs> Cornell Jackson, 31, could face up to 33 years in prison when sentenced to, uh, uh, when is it? <coughs> oh, next week. That's the penalty he received after two earlier trials in which convictions were reversed because he hadn't received formal competency hearings. Jackson's lawyers argued he was legally insane when, in a jealous rage over perceived attention that Keisha Smith had paid to another man, he slashed her on January 21st and 2nd of 2000. The second attack came after she returned home from getting her initial wound stitched in the hospital. Jackson testified that he battles demons regularly with Jesus and Michael Archangel. He refused to attend it. You know Michael? Oh, yeah, good friends. He refused to attend his first trial. was removed from his second in 2003 after he bared his buttocks. He dropped his pants to moon the jury. Jackson was ruled competent in April, and a jury convicted him Friday of aggravated battery, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and armed burglary. Or maybe after he dropped his pants, it was assault with a dead weapon. I'm not really sure. Mariah Carey. Oh, and please don't tell me that she really has the number one hit in the country. Is that really true, or uh, that, I, did I have a nightmare? How the hell would I know? It's true. I, re I read it. I read it on Al Gore's Internet, so it might be true. Scary, Mariah Carey. Can she sing? No. Is she attractive? No. How about that one boob in the middle of her chest? No. Pop superstar Mariah Carey is reportedly furious with Eminem for playing intimate answer phone messages she left him to huge audiences during his anger management tour. The We Belong Together singer left a voicemail on the rap for the rap star when he worked on Carey's Charm Bracelet album in 2001. Page6.com reports the private messages feature Carey begging, I heard you were getting back with your ex-wife. Why won't you see me? Why won't you call me? You're not killing me. The rapper then pretended to vomit into a prop toilet on stage. <laughs> And lots of new song, Puke, which features lines including, You Make Me Sick. Well, she really is desperate. You know, first it was Luis Miguel. Well, speaking of that uh, screamer. No, you never know, Ron. <laughs> maybe they'll just continue on to France. Yeah, yeah, maybe they will. Hey, Ronnie. You fairy. Oh, my God. He don't even have, like, a, a toenail on the ground, that screamer. Ronnie Reagan, Jr. Give me a break. Isn't that interesting how things, uh, how they, they have this way of turning around. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's, that's what Duff always says. Rectum. Things have a way of turning around. This is Neil Rogers. This is 562 AM. The one to two hours. Your Federal Communications Commission, formerly comprised of broadcast engineers, but now your overlords of decency, is pleased to announce our new FCC morality queen. Yeah, I mean chief. No, uh, she's the queen. And the real church lady, Penny Nance. This country was founded on good Christian values, which isn't true, but we say it was now. The shield, pencil. Family guy, pencil. Again, Rupert, you are hereby ordered to fill out additional airtime with pro-bush propaganda. Mm. 
HBO, Showtime, Sinner Max, Stars of the Rule, you're all off the air. To be replaced by the Trinity Network. Trinity, meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Not a ghost like Casper, but a real ghost. Oh, that reminds me. Leave those stupid plumber guys on till they find the Holy Ghost. Not ghost like Boo, but the Holy Spirit himself. My white, blue-eyed Jesus. I want to cleanse his feet. Foot fetishes are hereby approved. We're burning books, too, starting with The Wizard of Oz. We Christians have always hated that book for the longest time now. Something about a gay prison or something, as we'll have you believe, gay people cause 9-11. Although I did like Irreversible. Oh, Tanya, oh, Tanya, oh, Tanya, that, you're Jesus Vanilla. It's uh, 101 at 560, just 29 minutes away from the Marlin pregame show. Oh. Let's hear it, man. With uh, Let's see, we got Dave Van Boring and uh, Roxy Foxy. And uh, Josh is telling me that Roxy's getting really good. Yeah, he's been good. Isn't that what you said, or was that Duff said that the other day? Well, Duff, Duff said, said that the other day. but uh, Oh, so in other words, you don't agree? No, I, I, I think Josh Gordon good. said uh, Roxy is not getting really good. <laughs> As if anything, he sounded more like Gildy all the time. Isn't that what you said? Do I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that, I'm going to tell you something. I, I can hear it now. We're going to have like a duet with Mo do, 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 and Yeldy. A, a new one? Duet. A doyet? Ja, a a doyet. Do, 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 do. Oh, you'll be pleased to know, since you hate that uh, thing I play all the time, because it's not the original Thin Lizzy one. Right. That I'm not playing the Boys Are Back uh, tribute. To, I'm not playing that going to the ball game. Good. Aren't you excited? I am. What do you got I instead? I don't know why, what you have against that. I think it's pretty good. It's, uh, it's our zots, for one thing. Well, no, it's not the real thing. I, well, if you want, I'll go out and buy the Thin Lizzy CD. Yeah, I really have no need for it. I could play huh? from here if you wanted me to. I don't want you to. Oh, now let's mix it up a little bit. We don't want to hear that crap again. There you go. Oh. Take it on the Irish again. It's you. You fell. Okay, that's enough. Now, you got, I don't know what's wrong. Well, I don't, I mean, you're right. I don't like it. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. I don't know why they couldn't have been a little more true to the original. But, then, you know, they have all these great artists on do. there, man. Huh? That's what people do when they remake. They destroy. Musicians from the following bands are in this Motorhead, Ozzy Osbourne, Rainbow, Alice Cooper, oh. White Snake, Iron Maiden. Huh? Sorry, you said the Rainbow. The Almighty, Foreigner, Black Sabbath, Uriah Heep. Oh, man, what a heap. Anyway, I'll uh, surprise you. Oh, here's uh, the uh, Emmis on the storm. Hurricane Center, it has gained strength. Wind gusts up to about 85 miles an hour and again about 40 miles off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. We expect it to make landfall sometime tonight between 8 p.m. and midnight Eastern Time, possibly again as a small Category 1 hurricane. Then here's the path of, of Katrina. It will move right across the South Central Peninsula, exiting taking about Naples Friday, out. late afternoon, Friday evening, right You're around in Fort Naples Myers and they're area. taking you out. It's going to ring gain a little bit of strength. Maybe possibly back up to a Category 1 hurricane in the warm Gulf of Mexico waters. And then back in through the Panhandle early Monday I'm morning with here. a good rain event for those folks up there as well as southeastern Georgia. Let's talk about rain. You can see those outer rain bands spreading all the way across the Sunshine State. And we do have some flood watches in effect for most of South Florida. So see, even, here, even on MSNBC they're talking about those outer bands, the ones that I just listed for you there. Is that who did that music? A training device mistakenly left by a Secret Service contractor at Washington Hotel was the suspicious package, not that people are nervous, you understand, that prompted a building evacuation Sunday afternoon, law enforcement sources said. The FBI and Secret Service sent teams of investigators to the Mayflower Hotel just a few blocks from the White House after the package was found. A lot of people running around with dangerous packages, according to Farrell. It was a hotel employee who discovered it. Initially, a spokesman for Washington's Fire and Emergency Management Services Department said the package appeared to be a hoax. It appeared to be a deliberate attempt to make people think it was a real device, said Alan Edder. It was made to look like the real thing. Oh, yeah, I know people like that. <laughs> oh, and then you find out it's not the real thing. Just like that uh, tape we got from the Geraldo show. Remember her, that dyke? Uh, oh, I do. Want to hear it again? No. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, armed with a tape measure, what a segue. Woo! Toast in Maryland, armed with a tape measure, Sophia Jennings keeps her eyes open for overgrown weeds and the owners of the yards that have them. This is, this is what America has become. Jennings, a Baltimore County Code Enforcement Officer, checks on residents who are not in compliance with rules about overgrown lawns. In most area jurisdictions, letting grass grow more than a foot high or eight inches in Baltimore City is against the law. 
In some jurisdictions, the grass cops come in the form of code enforcement officers. In others, public works officials. This kind of reminds me of the uh, the tree people you had, the citrus uh, chanker. Yeah. In others, public works officials or environmental health workers are assigned to the task. We actually have a grass ruler, said Tommy Houck, chief of zoning enforcement of Harford County. The number of complaints varies by county, and so does the process that follows the complaint, although each county uses some form of notification process and time for landowners to comply with the law. Officials say the goal is the same everywhere for property owners to cut back the grass and weeds cluttering their land. So we already had the grass police talking about a different kind of grass, talking about that wacky weed. Now we got the grass police talking about the grass that's grown out of your yard. Oh, give me a break. Relocated to a modern, expanded naval hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, not too far. Oh, yeah, they're closing up Walter Reed Medical Center. How do you like that? He was too liberal for them. What religious uh, nut? Do you hate the most? That's our poll question today. Here's our last peek at it. You can take a peek at it yourself when you go to our website to read all those intellectual stories that Josh worked so hard to put on there and that I worked that I scoured to find. George W. Bush, 222. I keep asking you if you remember that show, Room 222 with Karen Valentine, and no. you always say, No, no. but Boca Brown does. Oh, well, that's because he's old like me, old chicken neck. Louis Farrakhan, 56. Jerry Falwell, 55. Look at that. They're like ass to ass, kind of like Jennifer Connolly. Pat Robertson, 46, Jesse Jackson, 35, Al Sharpton and the Pope have 20 apiece. Ever see them together? Not lately. James Dobson, 16, Jimmy Swagger, 13. I have sinned. D. James Kennedy, 10, virulent. Jeb Bush, 9, none of them. I'm a religious nut, 9. Benny Hinn, 6, John Ascroft, 3, and Billy Graham, out of 520 votes. Our goal, by the way, is 500 uh, for the show today, just to make us feel better about life. And we got 520 already. How do you like that? That's pretty good. I guess we probably got a captive audience. Everybody's inside, glued to the radio to get the latest and the greatest on on this catastrophe that's about to take place. Everybody's going to drown. I, I just I just think there's a little bit of uh, overreaction here. I could be wrong, but whether I'm there or here or any place else, that's always the way. That's the Florida effing way, man. The South Florida effing way. Get everybody. With, I I saw some stories on there on the uh, Wicked Web. Uh, people showing pictures of people buying uh, lumber again. Mm-hmm. And stock it up on all the bottled water. It's the same old overreaction. Did you go out and buy a whole bunch of bottled water? No, I was going to get gas for the generator, but then you know what happened. Gas for the generator? You don't think that uh, you're going to lose power, do you? Just because we have like in a little Hollywood? bit of rain? Huh? In Florida? It's on right now. It's me again, Bob. Douche when you're done. Okay. That's Bob from FPNL. Now, of course, we like FPNL a lot, don't we? Oh, yeah, heaps and gods. <laughs> They're the best. If a pigeon's got diarrhea, man, you're going to lose power. Speaking of that, a man in Columbia, Kentucky, clad only in his swimming trunks and wielding a baseball bat, went on a vandalism spree at the home of his estranged wife and her former husband and smashed his pickup truck through the back doors of the Adair County Courthouse. He was a little PO'd, I guess you might say, and fired up. Ronald Graham Webb of Columbia, Kentucky, faced multiple charges from the uh, spree last weekend, including driving under the influence, criminal mischief, burglary, and driving without insurance. Oh, driving without insurance, if that was a crime in South Florida, man, you'd all be in jail, especially in Dade County. He made an initial court appearance this past Monday, pleading not guilty of the charges. Uh, a breathalyzer measured Webb's blood alcohol level at .19, well above the legal limit of .08. Webb, using an aluminum bed, allegedly struck three vehicles in the driveway at the home of Steve Franklin, the ex-husband of Webb's estranged wife. Webb's wife, Marcia, moved into the home after she separated from Webb this month and filed for divorce. Webb also allegedly broke into the house, leaving damage estimated at 25 grand. Among the items severely damaged were two televisions, two computers, air conditioning unit, three fans, ten mirrors, two compact disc players, five doors, several walls, a partridge, and a pear tree. He also shattered the turlet. That sounds to me like the worst crime of them all, wouldn't it be? Indeed. What you do without that porcelain bus? The family had been away at the Kentucky State Fair. Oh, State Fair with Pat Boone. Remember that? No. Wesley said that Webb then drove through the courthouse door shortly after 9.30 p.m. on Saturday. The courthouse was closed at the time. Thank God nobody was injured. Now he just got a little worked up. That, that's the American way. Just come down to Florida, baby. That's right. You get all exercised and P.O., just blow a bunch of people and make you feel better. Because they're all dangerous. They're threatening. And, you know, it's hard to believe, but uh, that's, that's just the way it is. Just like uh, Jim Clancy said on CNN International yesterday, or Tuesday. Remember that? No. About Pat Robertson? And the fact that he plays on the ignorance of the American people. Oh, yeah, now they have no idea what's going on around the rest of the world. And they know nothing, nothing about geography or history or anything, uh, current events. He plays to the fact that there's millions of ignoramuses in America. And look what you got for president. Abu Ghraib. That should prove it, even though they had to steal it. You know, for years, Armstrong Ford or Homestead has always treated everybody just like family. And they want to extend an offer right now to you to join their family. 
Ford nationally has extended their Ford family plan offer through September 6th. And right now, right this moment, at Armstrong Ford Homestead, they'll give you the same great pricing that every Ford Motor Company employee and their families get. Not only do you get family uh, employee pricing, but you also get Armstrong Ford's exclusive Tires and Batteries for Life program. And for a limited time with any new car purchase, you're going to get a color TV free. So what you be waiting for, man, pick up the phone right now and talk to David Rich. Call 305-247-5112. You won't get a better deal on a Ford any place. No bait and switch, no phony deals. This fantastic offer is only waiting for you at Armstrong Ford or Homestead, where they always treat you just like family. Armstrong Ford is proud to be locally owned and operated, and Vice President and General Manager David Rich invites you to bring your family to meet our family. Armstrong Ford Homestead, U.S. 1 and Southwest 307th Street, 20 minutes south of the 836. You won't get a better deal on a Ford any place in town besides. In fact, we'll bet fat boys life on it. That's how sure I am. Check them on the web at armstrongcars.com and give David a call at 305-247-5112 and ask him about the Ford family plan today. Drive a little extra and save thousands and billions and zillions of dollars at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. This is Neil Rogers. This is 5.16 a.m. I turned the knob on my radio I heard a crappy song by J-Lo Must be payola Yes I pay, 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 payola They put it on the air even though it sucks Cause Sony paid them a thousand bucks of payola Pay, 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 ola. Pay, 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 ola. Now every time you hear J-Lo sing, someone's getting lots of free bling bling. And if they make the record number one, they get a laptop. Absolutely. Sam Anak, New York, a 43-year-old North, uh, North Country man, has made the Guinness Book of World Records in a new entry for the longest eyebrow hair. Frank Ames of Saranac in Clinton County measured at 3.078 inches, or about 7.8 centimeters, eh? I eat your heart out, Andy Rooney. Yeah. Now, I don't understand why. Maybe he doesn't have any hair on his head. But people, are like, when you get a haircut, don't you have them trim your eyebrows? Sometimes they do it without you asking. You know, they just zip them right. up. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's because they don't want you to look like some kind of a clown. Like Andy Rooney. One of the sloppiest. Slur- who, who, oh, there's just so many of these people over the years have had these... Bushy, nasty-looking mm-hmm. eyebrows just makes them more gross to look at. Maybe it's a distraction from the rest of their face. Lena Brezhnev. Oh, brother. Yeah, there's another good one. Long. There used to be some, like, uh, uh, union guy, AFL-CIO. Was it John Lewis? Was that his name? Had those big black eyebrows. Must have weighed about 14 pounds apiece. Now, granted, I don't go get a haircut anymore because I do my own thing with that, uh, that primer. Right. But I certainly trim my eyebrows. I don't want, like, big, oh, Jesus. I don't know why it grows like that. It just always has, Ames told the press Republican of Plattsburgh, New York. Ames' journey toward notoriety began almost two years ago when a co-worker at Bombardier Corp. noticed a bushy brow and suggested he try for a record. Ames then decided to go for it but discovered that no such category existed, so he made a phone call to Guinness and was sent a bunch of forms to fill out and rules for officially getting recognized. Ken Joy, a machinist and measuring expert at Bombardier, measured the hair in February 2004 with Plattsburgh Mayor Daniel Stewart and the city's entire common council standing by as witnesses. Now Ames is on page 24 of the 2006 edition in the body parts section. Oh, I wonder what other body parts they have on there. Huh? It's crazy how much people want to know about this, Ames said this week. I've been on radio shows all day. I could build children's hospitals all across the world, and this is what I would still be known for. Bushy eyebrows. That's uh, the American mm. F and Way man. Pathetic. Peru, Indiana. Ever been there? I nope. don't even know where the hell that is. No. Nope. Well, that's a, you know Peru, it's South America. It's a Latino obsession with drugs. You know, it's it's uh, it's in their blood. Not so much the Cubans though, except for George, but more like the uh, you know Colombians and Venezuelans and I don't know about the Peruvians. Neither. A, cu- a custodian was arrested for making meth inside the First Baptist Church where he worked. Richard J. Mosley, 30, About 30 man. of Peru, Indiana, has been charged with felony manufacturing methamphetamine within a 1,000 feet of a youth center. Well, I guess he figured that business would be close by, you know? Sure. 
He was arrested Monday after Miami County, that's Miami, Ohio, sheriff deputies discovered materials used to make the drug in church. All right, you got to be on drugs to go to church. You have to be a crazy person. He was released from the Miami County Jail on bond Tuesday, also charged with possession of stolen property, possession of precursors with intent to manufacture meth, and maintaining a common nuisance. Deputies searched his home and pickup truck where they found several loaded handguns, including one that had been reported stolen. But you know what they didn't do? They didn't shoot him and kill him. That's like poor Anthony. Well, I just keep thinking about that story and about right. that call we had that day uh-huh. from that vice squad cop, that jackass, that SWAT uh, team he guy. He was a drug dealer. Yeah, he had a scale. Yeah, maybe they ought to put your ass on it. God, probably break the bank. Give me another beer. Oh, what is it, Liz? Now you can get a little peace and quiet. Ah, that's my mo. <laughs> what are you doing here in Honolulu? When I went you with here, I flew right over and dressed up like Connie Stevens. Just for you. Well, yeah, you're forcing me to do this. Huh? Hey, how about a nice Hawaiian punch? Sure. <laughs> Oh, boy. 